messaging. Yes. Okay. So I don't have a huge agenda today. Let me just make sure I don't accidentally. There we go. Okay. So uh, I figured uh, it's a ZBrush channel, so I'm going to go through some ZBrush stuff for the last two couple of things that I've posted. Let me go to... We can, we can look at these, I suppose. Me, my profile. So, uh, we've been doing this Coast stuff. So, for example, I'll go through and we'll talk about... I mean, I've already got the videos on how we block this out based on the cartoon, but I don't think we went over... Let me close this. I don't think we went over, like, cleaning this up and doing all the little detail-y type things. And then on my channel on Thursday, we'll go over the Substance Painter stuff and Character Creator stuff. So, Character Creator base for the body here, and then all of this is just ZBrush. Well, it's all ZBrush. Even the face was all ZBrushed. Um, fiber Mesh, and then Substance Painter. Uh, and then also, if this is still up, do I still have stories? Yeah. And then also the Ultramarine that we started on this channel. Um... We'll go through how I updated the body, made the ports, um, modeled some of the weapon stuff. Any, yeah, hopefully, I'll have questions by the time we get there. But uh, yeah, any of this stuff, you know, this is all ZBrush too. So uh, go through and we'll look at some of that. And then we got some mocap stuff uh, set up last night. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, here is Co. And like I said, uh, we started with the CC character creator base body. Uh, just so I could use some of the facial animation stuff that's built into that. So if I go into solo mode here, uh, we go into polyframe. We have poly groups on here and this one, you know, subdivision level five. So we can control shift, tap to isolate that. We do have on this character, and I think I left it on when I rendered it. I left the shiny eyeball part. So this should just be metal, right? And I think I left the shiny eyeball part on. But anyway, we used the Avatar Netflix show as reference. Um, and it looked to me like just kind of a metal, it had some scratched edge wear, so maybe a porcelain or metal mask that was painted. Uh, we just kind of rolled with that. So to get rid of these eyelashes, just control shift, tap the head polygroup. And really, it's just going through there. I, I pulled out kind of a rounded edge on here with an inflate, but at the end of the day, actually, you know what I can do? I can load a base body. Let's look at that. Uh, let's see here. Recording. Character. Base. C tool. Um, did we start a neutral female? Yeah. So I'm going to load up just a base here. And we'll just kind of start fresh. X symmetry turned on. So X to turn on X symmetry. Control shift tap uh, the head here. And this is what you're going to get. is just like a nice human eyeball. So in here, and we'll see we're on subdivision level five here. So you can go down to like maybe subdivision level three, and then I'll go into the damn standard brush. So B, D, um, uh, S for Damien standard. And we'll go through here and I'm just gonna hold down alt and we're gonna go through and we're just gonna kind of pull up a ridge around the eyeball. And that's essentially all I really did was just kind of start Mm, maybe not super low. I mean, you don't need to start at like Southern level one. Well, I mean, you can if you want to go through here and like use your move brush or move brush with AccuCurve turned on, which is this one right here, brush, AccuCurve. Uh, then go through here and you can kind of pull points if you wanted to. Um, one thing you can't do is box model. You don't want to add any edges or extrude anything because we can't change the vert order if we want to take advantage of the facial animation later. So... Uh, hey, John, you. And then we can go through here with our Damien Standard brush. And like I said, just kind of pull this out. You can also grab the Damn Standard 02 brush from the internet from Mad Damn Art. And that will kind of do a, we'll use this later on the creature stuff. That'll kind of push in a nice, nice meaty push in with a little bit of inflate around the edges. And that'll kind of give you some nice wrinkle stuff. You can also hold down Alt on that brush. And then I'll kind of pull out to a ridge, a very sharp ridge. You might need a little more resolution than that. Um, but really, it's either, for me, the damn standard, uh, oh, what is this? Just damn standard. Or the Orbs Cracks brush. That's another one you can download from the internet. I just hold down Alt, and then I'll again just kind of pull out to a ridge. And then we'll go back in with maybe our clay brush, and then maybe our H-polish brush, and then 
if you hold down Alt with your H polish brush, that'll polish out to a ridge. And then if you let go of Alt, it'll polish back down to a ridge. So basically just going through here and sharpening up the eye hole. Um, and then, like I said, I went through with the inflate brush, maybe a little higher intensity, maybe lazy mouse turned on. And then we just kind of go through here and just kind of put a bead right along here. Let's go up one more. Um, you can subdivide past subdivision level five, the default CC base body that you can download um, will be at subdivision level five by default. You can just like, hit control D or hit that divide button one more time. Um, but essentially that's all I really did. And the reason I put the bead on there is just to catch an edge that I could go through there and put some edge wear on, um, you know, and also the, the fold in here too. You can go in here and let's do, let's take our Z intensity down and then under our stroke lazy mouse, uh, lazy radius up a little bit. And that way we can kind of get a smooth um, kind of arc in here. And let's go around this way. There we go. So just kind of push this in like so. And then, so kind of a, just a tiny bit of hard surface sculpting. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, something like this. And then you go in and polish that up. Same thing kind of on the lips too. Go in here, maybe even just with the standard brush. Uh, let's go ahead here to stroke, lazy mouse, lazy radius up. Hmm. Standard brush acting kind of weird, but yeah, you know what? Maybe damn standard O2 on this one too. So we kind of pulled out a ridge uh, around the lip here, and then we can kind of soften that with a little bit of standard. Just drop that Z intensity down. Oh, you know what? Let me see if my Wacom settings are different. Customize. No, that's right. Hmm. This feels different today. Of course, it's been actually a, a bit before, since I've been sculpting. There we go. Just a little ridge around here. Just a little smooth to soften that up a little bit. And, uh, you know, mo moving around the features to get what I want. So that, we'll just go in here and we'll say delete all. Subtool delete all. And we'll hop back over here. Hit F to frame, and essentially that's where we ended up. Just kind of looking at the reference. The we had a few kind of side views, did we? Let me see here. I think we had a bunch of front views as reference, and then the side views we kind of had to zoom way in and just try to guess on the. I think. Yeah, I didn't have a great side view that I can see here, um, but um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for checking in, John. You. Uh, I think I'll do a stream on Thursday that'll go through and I'll, um, cause this is the ZBrush stream on Pixelux channel. And then on Thursday, I'll do it on my channel and we'll go through, it wasn't much character creator, little bit of Maya for the legs. Um, and I just, you could just toss it all into Marmoset or Unreal. Um, and then with the, like a Olympic FBX animation cache and then uh, just apply your materials and that was it nothing too fancy um yeah and this was all i want to you could go ahead and just start you could go ahead and paint this in zbrush if you wanted to um and you could transfer that paint detail because this is just when you're painting in zbrush it's just a poly paint which is vertex color and then you could bake that vertex color off in whatever baking program you want um but when it comes to scratches and stuff and material settings, I usually don't do that in here, but it's easy enough to kind of go through here. We'll do like um, skin shader and then we'll say color fill object with maybe just a slight off white here. And then, you know what, let's go in here to texture import and just for some reference that we can use. I wonder if this is actually going to be harder than I think it's going to be I'm kind of thinking through my head. <laughs> Eh, we'll see. So we're going to go in here to reference Netflix and we'll just grab a this general straight on view. So texture, import, grab your texture, add it to spotlight with a little plus sign here. Uh, we'll zoom out a little bit. So here's, here's our reference. And then this is what I was using to kind of go through and kind of match the facial features. And if we want to, we can go into movie, timeline, show. You can line up your camera here. Uh, and if you need to, you can also go and hit Z and then go in here and just kind of rotate the reference around. You could even use little warp manipulators if you want to kind of push this around. But get your reference lined up uh, and then we'll go ahead and put a little dot in our timeline. So if we move 
this around. We can use our arrow keys to snap back. Um, so now we want to paint this face. You could literally go in here with your head selected, go in here to RGB and just paint from the image straight back. Now, if you've matched it perfectly, um, you're good to go. Now, eh, that's not terrible. Um, but as you can see, hey, we got it all painted on there. Uh, and then you can just transfer this as a uh, color information. Granted, nose a little off, lips are a little off, eyes are a little off. So uh, instead of doing that, I took a little bit more of a measured approach. And I would probably, you know, I would probably just use this just to be like, hey, uh, you know, I need to line this up a little better. And if you need to reset your camera, you can just drag that dot off of there. And then you can just boop put that right back in there and then put a little another dot in there. So X symmetry is still on because my face is still symmetrical. And then I'm just going to go through here and I'll just mask. Instead of painting through, I'll just kind of get a good idea of where these little eye things are. And then I'll just kind of clean this up a little bit. So a little bit of masking here and then oof, there we go. And then look at your reference and all the contours of the face that you need. Just go through there and make your changes. And if you need to sharpen this up underneath masking over here, uh, you do have uh, blur mask, sharpen mask, clear, invert, boost, all that good stuff. You can also just hold down control alt and tap on here and that'll sharpen up or control tap and that'll blur it out. You can actually go blur it out and then sharpen, blur it out and then sharpen. That'll kind of smooth your uh, mask line. And then when you're ready to fill this in, just control tap out here in your document to invert that. And then we'll grab like a little navy and then control alt f is my hotkey for color fill object and there you go you're off to the races and then same thing for the lips or you instead of masking first you can literally just go in here with a dark red and go in here and just paint just make sure well i use standard with the rgb turned on z i turned off you can also do b p a that's your paint brush that is the standard brush with rgb turned on this turned off your rgb intensity you can drop that up or down um, we'll just keep it at 100, and then we'll go through. Oops. Switch back to standard brush. I, I just It's like a nervous tick that I have <laughs> to always be on the standard brush, so that's usually why I don't use the BPA brush, but not the BPA, the paint brush. So here we go. Paint, 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 paint. And, you know, do a nice little paint job there. So that's a good start for that one. And we'll put this back to white, and we'll put this back here. Um... Uh, what unit size is generally used for sculpting in ZBrush? If I need a specific unit size, like if we're using a, for the example, the character creator base body head, that's the unit size that I use. So, uh, or if I'm doing something for Marvelous Designer, I will bring in, I will import the Marvelous Designer avatar, which I can do. I'll show you. If you make something in ZBrush, you just go in here and you're like, oh, let me grab, let me start from a sphere and drag a sphere out. Go in here to edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Turn on X symmetry, and this is this is how you whoop, see it. There we go. This is how we we're starting our Z brush sesh. Uh, let's you know what? Let's say brush reset all brushes. There we go. So we're we're fresh in Z brush, and we're going through here, and we're sculpting a cool little guy. Um, this is just a Z brush you like two units scale, and it's generic units. And if you were to export this to another program, it would probably probably maybe import this as two millimeters, um, but it's just an arbitrary scale. So if I wanted to go into Marvelous Designer and make some clothing, the first thing I would do, well, let me explain this too. Go in here to Z plugin, Scale Master, tap that little Scale Master top part, and there's a video in here by Joseph Dress that'll walk you through Scale Master, and then these will also walk you through Scale Master and how it works. So if you want to work to a particular scale, that's a really good um, thing to use, but you can also, what I tend to do is, let's go to my desktop here. Again, if I want to make something in Marvelous Designer, I'll just bring in the avatar. This will give me the scale that Marvelous Designer works at. The other cool thing it does is if I go down here to export, you're going to see it has an export scale of 966.47625. That means, hey, look, my brushes work with this scale. Um, uh, you know, I can make my brush big, I can make my brush small. Uh, everything is basically ZBrush friendly, right? If I go in here and append a cube, you'll see the bounding box for this cube is exactly the height of this character. So 
even if you are working at another weird scale from another program, maybe you're working on a, a landscape that's miles long, you can import it and it will adjust the export settings in order to make it ZBrush friendly to work on. Uh, that's generally what I do if I need to work to a specific scale. Uh, also, if I'm doing 3D printing, I'll import the bounding box of my print volume and I'll just import that. And then I'm working at millimeters. I can have a, a scale reference of the bounding volume. Let's think if I have one. Print. Blueprint print volume, no. Volume. Uh, I got some somewhere on my machine. That's just a, I can't think of a good term to find it. So anyway, scale, that's what I do. And in fact, even with this, I imported, uh, well, here's the thing. If I, if I go Z over a CC body, um, that may or may not work. Um, this one, it did another thing you can do in the scale master. If you bring something in and it's like, ah, or here's another thing that can happen with scale. If you're in ZBrush, and you're like, hey, I'm starting with the Z-sphere. Go in here to edit mode. Um, turn on X symmetry, and we're going to make a body, right? So let's say, okay, that's our uh, pelvis, and then here's our hips, and then here's our legs. Oops, make our draw size small. There's our legs, and we're going to make a really lanky character here. And then we'll put in a spine, chest, arms, and then Q to draw. Q to draw, W to move. There we go. We're doing like a little Jack Skeleton, Skellington <laughs> uh, character here. So here's our character. And then we want to go in and start sculpting. Um, this, your, your Z-sphere creatures can start getting really, really big. Because remember, this was the nice ZBrush unit scale. And then if you go in here and say, oops, sorry, my keyboard is at an angle. Um, we have this, and then we want to make an adaptive skin, so we'll go down here. Oh, we can just hit A on our keyboard. Um, but it also turns it into um, Dynamesh by default. So if you go in here to adaptive skin, you'll see Dynamesh resolution set to 256. We now have 830,000 polygons. If you don't like that, just turn that down to zero, density down to one, or uh, maybe leave that up to two. So now we have regular geometry. So we'll say, okay, make adaptive skin so we can sculpt on it. There's our skin for our depth from our Z-sphere. Uh, we want to go in here and start sculpting. Um, we may be working at a fairly, th this this thing got pretty big, right? Um, so if you ever want to be like, hey, I want to get this back to that Z brush, you know, two unit scale, just because my brushes are acting weird, you can go in here. So if we look at this, export scale set to zero. I think if we go in here to Z plugin scale master and we say Z brush scale unify, that will go through and make this more compatible with ZBrush's general units and also reset your export scale. So it'll still be the same size you had, but then you can just, you know, use ZBrush as normal. Uh, you can also change the scale by going in here and setting scene scale and using transpose and stuff like that. Um, so long story short, any scale is fine. I will just use scene uh, ZBrush scale unify to set it to ZBrush scale to make it a little bit easier and nicer to work with in ZBrush. Um, let's see. Uh, question. Hey, Mike, I always love your process. Th th uh, thorough pipeline explanations. Thank you. Uh, upcoming tutorials are pipelines with Houdini. Um, not anytime soon. I do have, actually, that's a good point. If you want to know more about ZBrush, check it out. Um, if you go to my homepage here and you, oh, homepage here, and you scroll down, I got a playlist just for, here it is, ZBrush What's New. So you can go through here and you can kind of check this out also. Um, let's just go to my ArtStation page here. So I'll give you some reference resources here. So here is some ZBrush stuff. And then also on my ArtStation page, here's ZBrush What's New, Character Creator, Live Streams, Presentations. Although I wasn't able to update this page for some reason the other day. So if you go through here, here's all the what's new stuff. You can go in here and you can be like, ah, let's look at what was new in 2021.6. And then you can go to this playlist here, start playing it. Uh, copy link. That's not what I want. Huh, did they change it? Oh, there it is. Uh, you can go in here to this little upper right-hand corner and you can... Um, 
to scroll through that whole playlist. Uh, same thing on here, just a playlist. Um, but this will have uh, this will have some resources on there. Also, kind of a little bit of making of. Like here's the co page. You can go through here and see some sizzle videos and. Uh, and this is all the live streams all in one place. So you don't have to go digging through my live stream playlist. You can literally just go here and like, a, look at this old school. <laughs> Buggy eyes. Um, yeah, so you can go through and you can watch all that stuff. How about that? Um, but, oh, to answer your question, uh, I do have some Houdini stuff on here if we go to playlists. Uh, but it's pretty old. Like here's the game dev tool stuff, which is really old. And then the other one... It's got a really ugly, <laughs> I don't know why I did this, but Houdini Auto Game Res. Um, and that's, this one was just taking our, our ZBrush models and then just throwing it into Houdini and having it create a game res uh, for us. So you just take your ZBrush model, go through, and it'll you can do voxelizing and for each loops, and it'll th drop all your high reses in and make it low res. You can even do UVs and bake it and stuff like that. So um, all that good stuff. So, uh, but it, it, long story short, no, I'm, I'm not smart enough to really use Houdini in any meaningful way. And at least right now, and I've been busy with other stuff. So luckily there's more smart people out there doing Houdini stuff. So, um, I wonder why you use the default Dynamesh in the Adeptus skin. Never had a need for it. Thinking that that could uh, not be the default. It's a lot of students forget to turn that off. Um, I'm not, yeah, because you're right. I think the thought process behind, I guess we can get rid of this. So when you're going through here and, you know, here's here's an adaptive skin made with just a subdivision. You know, here's, you know, plain old Z-sphere geometry. Uh, and then they did add the addition of in your Z-spheres to have the ability to go through here and in your adaptive skin settings, crank up your, dy oh, don't crank it up that much. Crank is big. Crank up your dynamic resolution so when you hit A, um, it'll give you a Dynamesh. And say this is useful if you're just using this as a base block out and you're going to Dynamesh it anyway. You can just start it with Dynamesh, I guess. But um, you're right. It's I, I tend to just want the little plain old Geo um, and go in here and then I can zero mesh it or Dynamesh it with my own settings. I, don't, I rarely use the default Dynamesh. But we'll go ahead and delete that out of there and delete that out of there. There we go. Back in here. And so we, we talked about the head. Um, it, this is poly paint, by the way, the little colorize here. You can turn that off and on. Um, underneath the, the materials, you can swap these out. You see I have some little quick materials I grab in here. You can go in here and just grab, you know, little materials you like to use. I have matte cap gray, matte cap green, skin shader, and then flat color. Uh, just here is a little, oh, and if you want more information on that, that would be this bad boy right here. Intro to ZBrush, new and updated. If you go in here, this will walk you through all the basics. I'll give you all this. Uh, that's just a good one to have. Um, and if you want to like control F on this, oops. Control F. <laughs> uh, what is this? Uh, custom. Here's where we can customize our interface and menus and video number 42. And then there's another one in here. Oh, custom brushes, saving custom brushes. So go check that playlist out that'll get you caught up and uh, if you're new to ZBrush or need to get refreshed on ZBrush um, so and that's where I made this little custom menu thing or customize my interface this is a custom menu a little marking menu that I have uh, that I can assign to a hockey and then uh, I just have quick access to stuff so now we'll get rid of this head out of here oh one thing I did want to mention is if you want to turn off the colorize you can just turn off this little um, paintbrush icon then you can hold down alt to tap through your sub tools here uh, but also you can hold down shift and turn on the paintbrush and that'll turn on colorize for any of your objects in your scene or all of them and then shift to turn that off. It'll turn off colorize for everything. Same thing for the eyeballs. Shift, turn off the eyeballs. Everything's turned off. Shift, turn it back on. Everything's back on. You can also use these visibility sets up here, you know, to store different, uh, so that, I mean, you can also have folders in here. So you can say control F and say what, whatever, and then just drag stuff in here that you'd want. So like we can drag all the base body stuff in here. Uh, you can also use move multiple to make folder selections, but that's good enough. So we have a whatever folder now. We can turn that off. Um, and now we're, since we're in visibility set V2, this will be our visibility set for these subtools. If I go to V1 um, and we turn whatever back on, 
now whatever's turned on for v1 and then in v2 whatever is turned off so that way you can use your visibility sets for quick visibility selections if you'd like anyway um this we've already talked about how to create generally like going through here um let me get rid of this avatar here it's bugging me uh go back in here so if we go back into whatever i'm going to take this base body i'm going to duplicate it off i'm going to say geometry uh let's go down to southern level three maybe delete higher delete lower it still has body parts that are visibility hidden so i'm going to go to geometry modify topology delete hidden and now i just have this head and this is where i just hit control w i'm going to control shift tap to isolate just the head here and we can say a couple different ways to do this one easy way if we want to put a membrane around a head is just to go through here and say this is basically just using slice control shift slice this is where I want my membrane to be. Control shift tap the membrane area, geometry modified topology delete hidden. It did grab some mouth bag in there. So two ways to combat this. You can go into your polygroups menu and say auto groups. Polygroups menu is somewhere in here. There it is. Uh, and what that's going to do, it'll make it more obvious, will give a polygroup to every non-contiguous mesh. So these things, these meshes aren't attached. Uh, there's no verts connecting them, so it's going to give that a polygroup and this polygroup. Control shift tap this one, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Also, control shift drag. You see how we slice curve, we hold down control shift and then tap control. That'll put it back to a visibility selector. You can use your spacebar to move it around, or you can just go up here, select a rectangle. Grab a little piece of this one, control shift A, which is visibility, grow all, and then you can just say geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Now we want a membrane, right? This geometry is garbage. Zero mesh, half, dab size down to zero. Boop, there we go. Brand new geometry, zero mesh half. You can even smooth this out if you want. Uh, deformation, polish by feature, open circle or closed circle will maintain your volume. So just tap that a couple times. Uh, zero mesh half, zero mesh half. Go as low as you want. Um, there we go, we got a little membrane here. Um, I'm gonna go in here with my uh, Q mesh, polygroup all. We'll pull out a little bit of a thickness. You can even go to the inside, hold down shift pull along there um, control if we just start dividing this we can hit control D to start subdividing uh, if you wanted to hold this edge a little better which I kind of do I'm gonna go down here to crease and say crease PG so you can see a little bit better that's gonna crease our polygroups now a problem with that so if I hit D for dynamic this will give us a preview of what it would look like if our mesh was uh, subdivided and it maintains a really sharp edge. So what I can do is say, give me a crease level of like one and then a smooth subdiv of two, or maybe a crease level of two and a smooth subdiv of three, just a preview. I can turn dynamic on and off. And what that's gonna do is show me a preview of what it would look like if I subdivided twice, uncreased everything and subdivided one more time, just by messing with the crease level and the smooth subdiv preview. Um, if this is looking pretty good, then I can say dynamic apply. And then there we go, now we got real Dynamic subdivision. I have a little bit of a nice edge on here. I can hold down shift and smooth that out if I want. I can hit control D to subdivide one more time. And now we've got our little membrane. Now if I hit W, we wanna go in here. This is how we can move things around with our gizmo. I can also say BT, brush transpose, switches over to transpose cloth, BTA. And now I, as I'm transposing, it will go ahead and do a cloth sim. These wrinkles are way too many. Drop that subdivision down so we have less geometry. And now we can just kind of add um, kind of like a little bit of a cloth. If you just want to simulate the outer polygroup here, just control shift tap to isolate it. And then you can just simulate this little outer area here. Um, anyway, that's how we ended up going through here. And you could, of course, go through here and like sculpt in with your standard brush a little bit here. You can go in here with your pinch brush with elasticity simulation iterations up to 100. In your brush settings, you can go through here and use your pinch brush to kind of add some wrinkles or simulate some wrinkles, blah, blah, blah. Make your wrinkles, right? Um, however, if you want to go through here and get these little, um, let's move this over, these meaty little uh, areas here. Uh, first of all, I made this membrane a lot thicker. Uh, so go in here and just use your inflate brush and then a little bit of smooth. Uh, and then we have subdivisions here. Go in here again with my damn standard O2. You can download that off the internet and then go through here. And this one, normally I would say if you're doing organic stuff, like 
keep it low res, get your sketch in there, get your volumes right, and then, and then and only then do you subdivide. In this case, it's just a membrane. I'm not overly concerned about like getting every single wrinkle 100% right from a sketch point of view and then subdividing. When I'm doing this type of stuff, subdivide it up as much as you need to, and then go through here, and we're kind of putting in just skin direction, basically. So it's kind of going through here. You could also use skin brushes or like spray some leather on here. Um, if you go into your standard brush, clone this off, say maybe a spray with uh, alpha 60. You can go through here, hold down alt, drop your Z intensity. Wait, don't hold down alt. Drop your Z intensity down, then hold down alt. You can go through here and you can kind of spray in, you know, kind of a leathery look or whatever. Um, or just go this way, there we go, skin direction. Uh, I didn't do any of that really, but it's there available if you need it or something like that. You can also drag rect. If you go into your comma key, go in here to alpha, maybe you have some leathery skin, which you will, these come with ZBrush. You can just grab leathery skin, just double click that. And then you can just, oops, let's go back to, um, let's go back to that standard clone brush. We'll swap out this alpha with leathery skin, we'll go to drag rect, and then you can just drag rect in with alt held down, some leathery skin. And that'll give you, you know, kind of a skin directional base. Again, I didn't do any of that, but feel free. Uh, all I really did is go through here with my damn Citadel 2 brush and just have fun. Oops, brush. Reset current brush, there we go. Um, go through here and just kind of add in my own skin direction. Uh, if, if you don't want the brush to go through the object, make sure you go in your brush, auto masking, turn on back face masking. Uh, I have a little button out here. It's assigned to a hotkey, so I can just toggle that on and off without even having that open. So here's back face masking. Just use my hotkey. I can look over here and see if it's on or off for any brush that I might have. Uh, so we can go ahead and turn that on for this one if we want. Um, oops, one of the damn standard O2. There we go. Turn that on, and then there we go. Just kind of putting in our skin direction, crisscross, crisscross, crisscross. And then if you want to put in like even like nasty little warts and stuff like that, you can go through here and you kind of do a little spin move and uh, that'll kind of pop out a little crusty. And then uh, that's about it. So if we delete that out of our scene, there we go. Nothing fancy, just some general kind of crusty skin direction based on a reference as best as I could tell. Uh, kind of the same thing for this. We already talked about the making of this and Z remeshing it. Uh, as far as detailing it out, it's just basically a big pair of lips, kind of. Um, I didn't use lip. You can go and get, like, skin brushes that'll have, like, lip skin and pore. And not that your lips have pores necessarily, but uh, those types of brushes you can go through and kind of put the stuff on. But really, it's damn standard O2 going through here, giving myself a, you know, here's my primary wrinkles. And then here's my secondary skin direction wrinkles. And then I'll have a bunch of tertiary detail stuff like going to my standard brush go in here make sure my lazy mouse is off you can just tap L to turn that off go in here and put in some little bop, 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 little warts and little bumpies and uh, that's about it um, yeah we'll go back to questions here oops sure sure um, uh, Yes, like, like you're saying, uh, scale, um, I kind of leave that up. I, I mean, sometimes I'll get really specific in ZBrush. You can get very specific in ZBrush, especially when you're doing like 3D printing stuff. Um, you can get, and yeah, here's a good, here's a good one. If we, uh, for some reason, if I'm in ZBrush and then I, yeah, never mind. I won't bring it up, but uh, let's see. Hasbro. ZBrush Summit. Any of the, like, there's been some really fun. Here's one, Hasbro Toys, and these these are some cool ones here. So these go through and talk, of, these, these talk of quite a bit, um, not quite a bit, but a little bit about scale um, and using transpose. Maybe not this one so much. I think it was this one. Yeah, this one's a really good one. This one's so cool. Wish I was a toy guy. So... I'll copy this for y'all. You can go in here and there's some really cool stuff about transposing, using transpose lines and scale and stuff for creating Hasbro toys. Um, cool, thank you. D. Sanchez uh, as a way to 
to use a form of layers like paint program to poly paint beneath or over an existing poly paint. Um, well, we did a little bit of poly painting. Let's give that a shot. There's some weird stuff. Not weird. Um, let's turn that base body back on and our poly paint back on that little thing here. And we'll go back to skin shader. Uh, so we have a poly paint. Uh, we can also have layers that can have poly paint on them. So if we go down here and we say layers, we'll say make a new layer. And then uh, we have to have the whole mesh showing. And then uh, what? <clears throat> go in here with a different color, RGB turned on, we're recording. So I'm going through here and I'm poly painting. You know what, let's, let's have a little, a little aesthetics. Um, so now if I turn off record, it's no longer recording on there. Uh, but now I have a layer. So if I ever try to go back in here and try to do anything, it's gonna be like, hey, you got layers. Do you want to turn something off? Or Because here's the thing, is you have something on, it's going to want to think you want to record to that layer. So you got to go in here and hit that little record button to record to this layer, or you can just turn it off. And then you can go in here and just poly paint or sculpt on your base mesh that isn't associated with the layer. Anyway, here you can see we can turn the layer on and off. We can go through here and turn the opacity down or over crank it. Same thing with sculpting. To your point though, can I put a poly paint in or like if I if I have a base here with poly paint and I want to put a poly paint underneath that. Gosh, not really. Um, one thing you can do maybe if we can we can um, we can kind of do this. We can make a new layer. We're recording in that layer. We can also go in here and say masking, mask by poly paint, but we, I want to get a little bit more specific. So I'm going to say mask by mask adjust color alpha. What am I looking for? It's something very specific and it's called masking. And it's called um, mask adjust fiber. Why am I? There, okay, it is mask by poly. Wow, okay. Mask by poly paint is exactly what I was looking for. I don't know why I was like, that can't be it. Um, if I want to just mask, like I want to have the illusion of painting underneath the blue that we already have, you can go in here and say, you know, mask, just drag off of here onto your blue. Um, and we'll say invert mass, and now the blue is mass, so I can hit OK. I think that's how it works. Um, and then we can say on this layer, as we're painting, oh, come on, uh, masking, mask by poly paint. I'm just doing it wrong. It's not, it is, it is a me thing. On invert mask, OK. Nope. Um, goodness. Mask by poly paint. Drag from here onto here. Mask, hide mask, no, invert mask. Reset. Goodness, frame. I remember how to use this. I know this is how you select a color. Uh, I want to hide colors. Mask. Unmask. That's probably what I wanted, right? Huh. Well, that's normally how I would do it, but I can't seem to get it to work. But uh, another thing, too, is if you do have colors, we can also try going in here to masking by um, intensity or saturation. And then if we turn off our poly paint here. Man, I can't get, I wonder if it's because I have on a layer. Let's just turn this off. Sorry, I have to figure this out now. Poly paint on. Uh, and you can tell I don't use layers a whole lot. <laughs> or do this, uh, mask by poly paint. Uh, reset, drag on here. I'm gonna switch this to unmask. Hide colors. <sighs> what am I doing wrong? Hide mask, hide colors, nope. Tolerance, no, that's fine. Overwrite, oh. Okay, so if I, okay, I'm stupid. If I came in with a mask, I could 
change the masking that's already exists along with this. That's what I was getting wrong. Okay, put it on overwrite. So now, um, if I reset and I'm like, okay, I just want to mask where the eyeballs are. I'm going to hide my colors. There we go. Now we're masking where the eyeballs are. <sighs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, we'll go back into our, to our layer. We'll turn that on so it's on record mode. And then you can kind of paint where it's not going to interfere with what's already there. Uh, and then you can stop recording. Now, I, it may also record the mask in there too. So if I go back in here. Yeah, so the mask is kind of built into that layer, which is kind of nice if you want to give the illusion that you're painting underneath something that exists. Um, but another thing you can do, uh, this isn't painting underneath necessarily, but if we go in here to our standard brush RGB turned on, you can go in here to alpha and texture, and there's a poly paint mode. Um, so it's usually set to standard, but you can go in here and say, hey, I want to lighten, darken, colorize, multiply. So we set this to three and do like a slightly darker blue. Um, and we are still recording. And you can see recording poly paint on a layer is doing something weird. Um, with multiply, let's see, record off. I was going to say bake all, unmask, go in here, there we go. So with this brush here, you can see there's a slight difference when this is set to multiply, there we go. Uh, it's a little bit lighter over the light one and then it multiplied over white, so it's a little bit darker, I guess. Um, so you can use this as a way you can kind of see, instead of just switching this back to one, you know, that's just painting that color straight over it. And of course you can drop your Z intensity down if you want to kind of feather that in. Um, but at 100% poly paint mode set to three, it will have a different behavior because it's set to multiply. Um, but anyway, I don't use a ton of layers, obviously, as you can see, sorry about that. Um, is there a way to select the subtool in the viewport and hide it by shortcut instead of eyeball? Um, probably, right? There's gotta be, let me think. Uh, let's see, go out of solo mode here. Let's turn on this and wait. So we're going through here and this is how I do all my selections. I just go through here and hold down Alt. Um, if I want to turn the visibility off, the key press for just that, you can go in here and you can turn off the eyeball or touch the little nameplate and that'll toggle it off. So I'm like, hey, I want to turn this off. Select it, turn it off, and then select something else. I wonder, let's try it. I'm going to go into Z plugin. Oh, do I have it installed? Yes. So I have a Z repeat it. Let's try it. So if I say Z repeat it, record new, visibility off, and record viz. Sure. So now we have a button for that. Uh, edit script, record new, select, and if I could set hotkey for visibility. I'm not sure what, if there, there might even be a built-in hotkey for visibility, but now that you mention it. Um, and that's a good one. It's never occurred to me to want that, but now I want it. Because, uh, yeah, you have to go in here and touch the eyeball or, you know, tap here and touch the nameplate. So that's usually what I'll do is I'll just go through here and touch the nameplate. But it would be nice to have a hotkey because then I wouldn't even have to look over here ever again. Um, no more looking at the subtool stack. Uh, I don't know about that one. If anybody knows, shout it out. I would like to know that too. Um, difference between damp standard, damp standard O2. So basically when we were doing like this, this kind of stuff here, if I go to my damp standard and just to make sure we didn't do anything, I'm going to go down here and say brush reset all. Um, this is going to be, oops, damp standard. So this, you can see this alpha is a little bit different. This, this will kind of, man, that'll kind of punch in and give you a nice uh, little carve in line. Um, but it's. It's not real, it doesn't go in and make a nice wrinkle kind of creature skin fold, right? Uh, if we go in here to damn standard O2, number one, I'm gonna have to make the brush size a little bigger because the way this alpha is set up and the way the brush settings are, if I use this now, it's like a little razor thin line, which isn't bad if you're doing like super tertiary skin direction or folds or something like that, it's totally fine. Um, but over crank that size and then you can go through here and this will give you those nice uh, it'll kind of punch in and then kind of fold out a little bit too. 
uh, so that I give you just those really, really nice pillowy kind of deep crevice wrinkles that'll kind of do that. So that's that's basically the difference. In this one, you can kind of, and it also has a little bit more of a feather touch. You can go through here and kind of start thick to thin and kind of just kind of brush over a thing and start, you know, again, like I said, you can go in here and just kind of push in little warts and stuff and give yourself some nice crumbly little crispy little whatever. Um, however, if I go into damn standard brush and try to do that, of course, make my brush size smaller. Um, it's just a little heavy handed. It's good for some stuff like hard surface going in here and pulling stuff out and some organic stuff. Um, just doesn't have that feather touch in that nice wrinkly that we like for creature stuff. Um, is there a way to make a transition from three polys to one with Z modeler? Um, I'd have to see a picture of that. I'm not sure. Three polys. I mean, you can't do end gons in ZBrush, but, um, yeah, I mean, probably. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, what I, I would need to know what the end result would be to kind of work my way through it. Um, cool, cool. All right. So speaking of selecting, so we go through and select and go into sol uh, solo mode. This was originally... Uh, gosh, let me load up the original actually. Give me a sec. Streaming Avatar Co. Um, updated, updated, updated. What's today? Four, ten, three. Scene. There we go. We're going to go way back. Like four years ago. There we go. So we are just kind of blocking this out, you know, using whatever. And uh, here's here's the shell that we started with. Um, and so really, I mean, I didn't do that much work. Although now looking at it, maybe I did. Uh, first thing I did is I wanted to go through here. I'm going to say uh, delete lower geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the X just as a starting point. Uh, you'll also see as I was sculpting this out again, if I'm going through here and I'm sculpting with my clay brush or whatever, and I'm sculpting and it's there's a thin mesh. Uh, if you dynamesh this, you'll get that little web webby, super thin, kind of crumbly mesh in there. Uh, that's because we didn't have back face masking on. So brush, auto masking, back face masking. Again, I'm just gonna hit my hotkey for that. That'll give me my little indicator here. Um, and then if I want to, with that on, I can now push pull so I can go through here. Oh, one thing to keep in mind is hold down shift and turn on back face masking if you don't want to smooth through your mesh. So now you're gonna see it's gonna leave this alone. Um, but I can now go through here and sculpt all this out. So now all of these thin meshes in here, I can, whatever. So we'll say mirror, mirror, well. Now, we did have from our original mesh uh, polygroups because we just built it with basically zero mesh and Z modeler. Uh, but if I want to redistribute this geometry, I can certainly do that. I can also, um, I can't reconstruct because when I mirrored it, there, it probably grabbed some triangles down the middle here you can see it kind of merged some of these down so now we can't get our geometry back but it's easy enough just to redistribute the geometry as zero measure so we have uh, polygroups we have an inside middle line and outside which is great so i can say zero mesh and if you need to know where that is geometry zero measure we're going to say half is a little too much we're going to turn that off we're going to say target polygon count of i don't know twenty three thousand. i guess keep groups um, the groups are already smooth, so I don't need to have smooth groups up. We can just turn that down. Uh, and before I do that, I'm going to hold down control and tap this latest point in history. That's going to store those vertex positions and polypane if you have it. Turn on your polypane if you want it. Uh, we'll just say zero mesh this. And what that's going to do is give me new geometry for this shape, uh, but it's going to lose a lot of the detail. But I can get that detail back by projecting back to our stored vertex state from our history. Um, this isn't too terrible, but I think we can go a little lower. While I'm doing this, so subtool project history, that'll move those verts back out to our original stored history points that we have. Um, I can say zero mesh half. Oh, zero mesh half. Oh, adapt the size down a little bit too. Um, the lower that number is, the more even quads you'll get. Um, it's generally useful. We'll say project history. Uh, if you're noticing anything weird, like this isn't too terrible, but you can go through here and you can kind of help it out with ZModeler brush by going in here like collapse edge, um, moving stuff around, 
smoothing some stuff out because sometimes your mesh will catch a you know a little weird vert and whatever. So uh, zero mesh half again. There you go. Project history. And if this is generally pretty decent distribution, I'm happy with it. That's when I'll just go through here and hit Control D, Project History, Control D, Project History, Control D, Project History. Now we have perfectly mirrored geometry, all of our details back. Um, and then we can go through here. And I think all I did, if I remember correctly, was just go through here and just kind of crunch and punch, we'll call it. <laughs> go through here. And on these edges here, just kind of getting kind of a crusty layered kind of feel along the edges here. I wish I had a more interesting um, methodology here, but I literally just went through here and just kind of made that um, kind of give it a crusty layered look just by going in with my damn standard O2 brush and then hold down Alt if you want to pull out to a ridge and then let go of Alt to kind of push in. And again, just kind of put in like a crusty layer on that shell. Uh, on the top parts here, that if you go into your comma key, go in here to brush, trim, smooth border, go in here, add a square alpha. Uh, this is how I use make rocks. Uh, again, turn on back face masking. Uh, and if you're just joining us, brush, auto masking, back face. Uh, so we're going through there, and if you want to kind of chisel away at a surface, you can go through here and you can just kind of tap on it or just kind of just just kind of rub the brush against the surface. Uh, if you want to build up a surface, you can hold down Alt, and it's kind of the same deal. And that's kind of what I did. Just kind of go through here, and I held down Alt, and I kind of went through, and I just, you know, started. Uh, and, and again, if you're going to bake something off, you're going to have a camera right next to it, go ahead and turn off symmetry, and just, you can have some stuff symmetrical that are on the edges, I guess, um, save you some time, especially if you're not, I'm not doing anything for anything serious, so I'm just trying to get some content done so I can get it recorded and out the door. So I will use symmetry probably a little too much, uh, but you know, just be careful that you don't have something perfectly symmetrical right down the middle, right in the middle of your face. Um, but anyway, go through there and like I said, um, kind of punch in that kind of layered look and then go right in on top of that with a little trim smooth border, just holding down Alt to kind of pull up monthly tubes. Um, BTB, uh, wait, BT, just trim lasso. Trim smooth BT, God, I changed these numbers again. BTT, trim smooth border. And then we'll switch this back to select rec. Uh, so again, hold down Alt and kind of go through here and just kind of punch in uh, or kind of pull out to kind of a crusty shell lip and then let go of Alt and kind of smush that back in and just kind of go back and forth through there. Uh, and then maybe go back to my damn standard O2 brush and hold down Alt and let go of Alt and kind of again just kind of exaggerate these shell edges. Uh, and then if I need to tone down some of this brush stroke will go into my trim dynamic. I'll even throw that square alpha in there. And then I'll go through here and just kind of knock these edges back and maybe kind of weather this back down so it's not so abrupt, you know? So kind of go in there and do that kind of thing. And that's about it, you know? And everything else is kind of the variations of that. You know, all the organic stuff made the exact same way. Just kind of go in here with my damn standard O2 brush and kind of clay brush and damn standard stuff around on the hard little appendage parts, um, trim smooth border, trim dynamic a little bit to get a crusty kind of crustacean spider exoskeleton kind of look. Um, same thing for these up here, same thing for the body back here, same kind of the same thing for the little stalactite, stalagmite, mite, tight is ceiling, right? Mite is floor, <laughs> I forget. Um, Ah, that's about it. Not much going on here. Uh, just kind of do that for a while and then go bake it out and then do your texturing. Ooh, got coffee. Yes. Okay, back to the questions here. Cool, cool. Um, how is it possible navigating the camera when mouse on mesh? Oh, so there's two navigation modes you can do. Um, so if you're just kind of, if I'm just kind of generally around an object, I'll just use ZBrush default navigation, which is kind of tapping and if you want to know more, I think we got a good navigation menu or 
what is this? Control F, nav, ZBrush navigation. What else is in here? I guess that's it. But uh, the second video in this playlist here. Um, but anyway, uh, so we're going to we're using basic ZBrush navigation, right? We're just kind of clicking out here and rotating around and holding down Alt and letting go and zooming in, and you can get pretty quick. However, when you're over a mesh, uh, that you, it thinks you want to brush on it. If you want to navigate, that's right-click navigation. So, actually, I have a little graphic in there that I can use. I'll scoot forward ahead. There it is. So, uh, right-click navigation. So here's the classic navigation right here, and then right-click navigation. Um, and I just have my pin set up. You can't really see it, but the pin, my Wacom pin, I have the right-click set to the little bottom little section there, or the little button on my pin. So that way, as I'm, if I'm ever zoomed way in, uh, you can use the safe action lines to use classic navigation, uh, but then I'll just hold down uh, my right click button and we'll say alt tap here. I wanna sculpt on here, I'll start sculpting. And then that way I can navigate, move scale and rotate um, using my right click. Uh, one thing I do tend to do, preferences, if I am gonna be using that navigation. Crap, where is it? Um, Keys, interface, custom UI. I don't remember where it is. Damn. Um, interface, click, uh, UI. No, it's uh, navigation. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. So, uh, preferences, interface, navigation. Uh, right click, navigation is on. Uh, you also might have uh, enable right click pop up. That's that brings up like a little right click menu. Uh, if you click and drag, that'll be navigation. But if you just click it, you just tap it once, it'll bring up a, a menu with a bunch of stuff in it. I don't use that menu. Um, I have my own menu, or I'll just tap S for draw size. I don't really need that menu. Uh, or I'll just drag over here for color. It has a bunch of good stuff in it. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't use it. Uh, so if I'm using a lot of right click navigation, I will go in here and turn enable right click pop up off just because it kind of pops up when I don't want it. And then if you're gonna make any of those changes, go in here to config, store config. And then that way, every time you open up ZBrush, um, you'll be able to do it. So here we are, right click navigating. Um, the only time where this can be problematic is let's say we're in here and we're sculpting on the head, I'm using right click navigation, and then I get something in front of me. And then if I right click navigate over that, it's actually not doing too bad, but Sometimes you'll be you'll right click navigate over a weird part of the body and it will want to focus because you can right click navigation. You can go over here and zoom in on wherever your cursor is, which is nice. Um, not just the last place you sculpted, but it's also not great if you catch something way out of your view and then it wants to kind of zoom in. But why well, it's making a liar out of me today? It's working perfectly fine. Um, anyway, right click navigation. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a teaching style video for more than beginner level uh, where you should start so if you're a super beginner and you're like Michael Pavlovich seems like a really cool handsome dude but I just hate his teaching style and he goes too fast and he's just not a good teacher where can I learn the basics of ZBrush I really don't know I'm sure there's I mean it's just in YouTube here ZBrush tutorial I'm sure there's there's got to be a bunch in here. Hey, look at all these. Look at all these beginner ZBrush, learn ZBrush. Honestly, it might even help. Hey, is that me? Hey, we're live. Um, <laughs> it might even help if you have a particular artist that, because like how, you know, if you're doing a bunch of stylized stuff, you may never ever touch the damn standard O2 brush. Or if you do, it's going to be in a very different way than we did on this asset here. So yeah, maybe find your... There, there's probably your favorite artist has, if they use ZBrush, they probably have like their own ZBrush videos and you can learn from them. I will say you'd be surprised at how many good ZBrush artists can't teach. I can't either, kind of. I can teach a little bit, but um, just because you can make cool art doesn't mean you can really teach how to do it uh, in any, <laughs> in a way that's watchable. Um, so... That may or may not work out for you, but good luck. Um, if anybody here has any suggestions, shout it out. Might call it out. 
So that's about as far as I can talk about this stuff. And then at the end of the day, uh, again, if you go to my art station page here, again, on my channel, we'll talk about um, Thursday, I'll do a live stream and we'll get into the meat and potatoes of texturing and animating and all that good stuff. Oh, fiber mesh we can talk about. But at the end of the day, here it is all rendered out, you know, a little bit of legs moving around and some dust particles in the air. That's just, um, that's nothing fancy. That's a video overlay. Um, and then, yeah, the default facial animation, the little bit of skin waiting around the little meaty part here. The shell's not moving. Um, here's just a turnaround. Here's just the thing. It's got all the materials applied, and it's just kind of a quick turnaround showing you all the details in the sunlight. Uh, here's the facial animation part. Uh, and in fact, on here, you can use your own face to drive that. So we'll maybe talk a little bit about that. And then again, here's all the videos for the making of uh, going way, way back. And then there's the one we did more recently where we did that face there. Um, next, oh, we can talk about fiber mesh. So one thing for fiber mesh is if you want to put fiber mesh somewhere, like along these little crusty areas in here, or maybe a big tuft back here, you can just go through and mask where you want it and then go down here to fiber mesh. Now, uh, if I do it to preview, this is the default. So go in here to modifiers. I like to change the base to white and the tip to white. Um, and then twist, I'm gonna turn twist down to zero. Uh, max fibers, I'm gonna crank that down a bit. And then we're gonna go in here to coverage and crank that up a little bit, give it some like thick uh, fibers here. Now, the thing with these fibers is, and you can also use gravity in here if you wanna, you know, let those float in the air if you want them to point up or point down. You can actually move your camera around so that I can kind of go in this direction here. And then if I pull that gravity up, it'll hang based on your camera direction. So if I go to the front and then do gravity up or down, um, you can kind of use this to get a general direction. Um, it, we're not grooming yet, uh, but there's our fibers. Now, these fibers are single-sided. They're like hair cards. Uh, and one thing you're gonna notice is there's only three spans. So like if I go and try to, or one, two, three, one, two, three here. So if I try to go and comb this and get something smooth or have some nuance to the shape, there's not gonna be a lot to work with. So you gotta go down here to segments um, and crank that up. And now you've got nine instead of three. You don't wanna go too crazy if you have a ton of fibers and a ton of segments, it's gonna be a lot of resources. Um, <clears throat> we're already on 1.26 million, uh, but ZBrushes can handle a lot. Um, so that's basically it. The other thing I did is because I knew I was going to be exporting this and I wanted to put subsurface scattering on these object on the, on the fur. Um, I did go in here. You may or may not do this. If you, if you just were going to render out a ZBrush, just hit BPR and you'll notice it'll smooth out your fibers and it'll give them thickness. However, if you're not rendering in ZBrush and you want that thickness built in, uh, I'm going to go in here to BPR settings. Um, I'm not going to do any BPR rendering, so let's put that down to zero. Um, profile. This is how many, um, right now it's set to one, which means it's a um, basically a card. If I set this to four, this is going to, and we'll say, okay, this is going to turn every single one of those fibers into basically an extruded cube, you know? So now we have real thickness, real geometry you can go through and you can inflate where you want or whatever. You can still groom it. Um, so that's basically what I did. Uh, you can, eh, you can export curves and do whatever you want to with those curves. You can go down here to, where is that at? Export curves. Um, I wasn't going to deal with that. So basically this is what I did. Set in, put in my settings, uh, go in here and say, let's kill some of this stuff. Fiber mesh, except, uh, I'm going to say you can activate fast preview mode at any time. If you hit no and you're like, oh, I wish I had max fast preview mode. Preview settings, fast preview. This will just give you, instead of showing you the profiles, you can go through here and you can groom. So BG brush groom hair toss. Go through here and kind of toss this hair around. Go through here and scoop it around. Um, one thing you may want to do is underneath brush, fiber mesh, front collision tolerance, turn that down a bit. That'll allow you to kind of sculpt a little closer so it doesn't kind of float above the geometry. This will interact with the geometry, but it'll, it won't be so floaty. So you can go through there and now we're just kind of grooming that hair. Um, now we don't have fast preview on, but we can again, turn that on. That'll turn it into, if, if you're on a 
kind of a crappy machine. You can use less resources while you're in here grooming. Uh, and then you can turn fast preview off and there it is. But you can see it, it previews just fine with the real geometry. Um, and then through here, just hold down control. Um, and you, when you hold down control and mask pin paint, you can paint the, you can mask the entire strand. So you can invert that, go in here with your pinch brush. Um, make sure I don't have cloth simulation durations turned on. You can go in here and just kind of crusty these down and move them around and, you know, use, use whatever groom brushes you want. Um, I use a ton of them. I guess if I wanted to kind of, where's my clumps, 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 spikes. There's clumps and spikes you can do to also kind of get that effect. Uh, but if you want total control, going in here and masking first is probably your best way to do it. But I think I was probably lazy and I probably went through there and grabbed spikes or clumps and just kind of did this and just kind of went through and whip, 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 and made a gross little crusty uh, hair. And then just exported this as geometry. And then that got rendered out as... You know this it's kind of a noisy image but i kind of like that um there we go that's all co that's all the co stuff um, um cool cool <laughs> fibers being realistic like yeah uh there's a way to polygroup the fibers into separate clumps for more control um so that you can there's two ways to kind of get polygroups you can see this has a blue polygroup and this has a green polygroup and that's because on this mesh that I was drawing on when I made the mask they had polygroups set up so what you can do is you can go through there and you can before you even paint your mask you can go through here and just hit like control W and control W and wherever you have a polygroup um, it will it will automatically anything that sprouts from this section will be will inherit that polygroup section so that's one way you can do it um, if you don't have that or you didn't set it up that way, we can still do polygroups here. So we can hit Control W, make this all one polygroup. And then if I want to have little sections, I can hold down again Control and just kind of go in here and mask and then hit Control W. And that will make that its own polygroup. So you can Control Shift Tap to isolate it. And then you can go through here and you can, you know, pinch or move this around or groom. Is there like a swirl? I know we have a uh, BS. BS. J for spiral and go in here and like in spiral hair around and stuff like that uh, and then control shift tap to bring everything else back there we go uh, yeah so you can kind of set up your own polygroups as you work just go through there and mask and polygroup and uh, you can even do it through visibility this one you may have to like grab a little piece and then do control shift a visibility grow all if it doesn't grab the entire fiber I don't remember if it does or not eh, it looks like it does if not control shift a control W the group visible and then there you go we got a little joker <laughs> joker color scheme going on um yeah and you can also you can poly paint this so if you if you wanted to you could ah, there's so many things you could do i don't know if you want to talk about it but uh we'll go back here to skin shader and we'll say we want kind of just a mid dark and then on the the tips here Maybe we want to go in here with our standard brush RGB turned on the intensity or RGB intensity down. You can go in here and you can kind of feather in. Um, that's a off. Unmask solo. Can I RGB? Um, let me think. Sorry, for some reason I I'm keep thinking I'm. Auto masking, no. Lazy mouse off. Um, what am I missing here? Texture is off, right? Oh, I don't know why a texture would be on. You can load up textures with uh, alpha to if you're doing using hair cards, that'll give you a similar result. Um, let me see here. Oh, I did. I did have a small mask. God, I'm having. I'm having a hard time today. Okay, unmask everything. Jeez. Uh, and then if you want to go through here and, you know, poly paint. Um, oh, I still have it on multiply. That's why. Uh, I guess it doesn't reset that, huh? Alpha and texture, poly paint mode back to one. There we go. So now you can go through here and you can kind of brush in 
a little poly paint. You can also remember if you want to go through here and hold down control and just kind of tap through here and then invert that and fill. Um, you can go through there and you can let's see mask. Let's turn off poly paint. Mask, mask, mask. You can kind of go through there and put some salt and pepper hairs in here. So invert that. Control Alt F. And that'll go through and kind of fill. Or you know if you don't want to commit to uh, fully salt and pepper. You can go through here and you can kind of just kind of paint just those fiber strands a little bit. So it'll have a little bit of... Also another thing too, while you're painting and the masking is kind of throwing off your color, um, how you perceive your color, go in here to masking and turn off view mask. And that way you can go through here and you can kind of paint with... The mask is still there. You're just not looking at it. So that way you have a better idea of how much your color's showing up. So that that way you kind of go through there and do different strand color variations. Um, yeah, something like that. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, geometry HD to make this piece just to just divide it. I rarely, if ever, use Geometry HD. But if you need that much fidelity, it's a totally cool thing to do. Um, cool, cool. Um... Thank you very much. Show us from where you export the fibers. If you already showed it, my apologies, just got in. Um, so when I went to export my fibers, all I did was go in here with everything showing that I wanted to export and then tool export and then just choose FBX. And FBX will export one file with a bunch of little files in it named what your subtool is. And then um, again, on Thursday, I'll go a little bit heavier into the, the scene file and the rendering. But that's it, that's all I did. Uh, if you did ha wanna export just the curves, uh, which I didn't do, but you can, you can go down here to your fiber mesh settings, masking. Where are we at? Jump, oh boy. Uh, fiber mesh, you go in here and under export curves, you can just hit that export curves button and that'll export your fibers as curves. Uh, do we transfer fiber mesh to Maya Exon? Yes. Yes, you can. It, with either of the Now, if you export the geometry, it'll just be geometry in Maya. Uh, if you export curves, it'll be curves. Um, and then you can use that for whatever you'd like. I don't, I haven't done that a ton. It's been actually a while since I've done next gen. So, yeah, there's better resources out there than me. Cool. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, I think we're done with this one. We'll go ahead and get rid of that, delete all. And let's go look at some other stuff. Um, so another thing we've been playing around with, uh, this won't be on any of these, but it will be on my Instagram here, I think, in my stories, I've been putting some stuff. So this Ultramarine, I'm still dusting off old, old projects, uh, and this is going to be for a demo. Hopefully I can get it recorded today. Oh, it was supposed to be recorded weeks ago. Um of the CC base bodies and what you can do with them and how you can go through here and do the animation stuff. But all the modeling was done in ZBrush. Same thing for the bolter and the chain sword and his muscles and his ports and uh, his uh, little suit here. Uh, so we can load that up. Uh, just li like I said, I'm dusting off old projects. So if we go in here and we say Warhammer, here's the two live stream. Ooh, that's a long one, four and a half hour live stream. Um, where we go through and we talk about how we modeled a bunch of the stuff for the armor. So we've already got a pretty good baseline for how that stuff was made. But let's go here to streaming 40K. I do have, <laughs> so I have two versions of this, I think. Let me load this one up. This one's a little different than the one you just saw. This is a big file, sorry. Hmm. Okay, so here's here's the base body before I beefed him out totally. So he's kind of, uh, he's a little more normal. He's actually just a big old power lifting looking dude. I did go and spice him up a little bit, made him a little bit more muscular, a little bit more chiseled. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. I've made him ridiculously huge. But um, here is kind of the base body I kind of started with, you know, um, and this is kind of an uncomfortable A pose, but that's just what I started with because, you know, matching the base bodies. And then if I go through here and I hold down, oh boy, it's gonna be huge. Shift, 
and we'll go ahead and turn off base body. There we go. So, and that's the pose there. So, <laughs> this is a version. Oh boy, I don't know if that's going to work, but eh, I guess it's not. That's a little weird. But anyway, here's a version of that armor that's a little more intense. We have, and again, I don't know, I don't know enough of the lore to really make totally cool things, but I, you can see I'm updating the backpack and I've got skulls everywhere and little, uh, little guys, uh, body parts in there, uh, that I've seen them carry around, uh, you know, a little bit more ornate looking stuff. Uh, this is all just block out by the way. There's nothing in here that's like totally finished. You can, if you get in here on any of this stuff, you'll be like, oh yeah, this is all pretty just like a sketch, right? This is where you start. You just start with like a basic sketch of what you want the stuff to kind of look like, and then you go in and refine it. You can rebuild the stuff with geometry or go in here with your polish brushes, you remesher and just make it look nicer. Um, but anyway, here's the, the fully fledged armor that eventually may exist. Um, but not yet. So we'll go ahead and delete all that. And where we were, this is, that was the unvanilla version. Um, this is the original version, I think, that we went through and after we live streamed for a bit. There we go. So here, here's the nicer, friendlier, I don't know about that friendly, but here's the more regular version of the armor that we made from our live streams and went in and refined a little bit. Um, I guess we can talk about that. And also, so there's the unvanilla. And then let me just grab this real quick. Base body gear. Hair, blades, ports. That's a Z project. So if you have a Z PR, so this is a Z tool, you can go in here to tool load and that'll load in your Z tools and you can have multiple Z tools uh, loaded up. So if I go in here and say, hey, here's the other Z tool we're working on. We don't want any of this anymore. We can say delete all. That'll clear this out of memory. So when it does a quick save, um, for example, that'll save everything in your scene. And if you have a bunch of stuff loaded, obviously it's going to load it all up. Uh, or have to save for a long time, but um, you can go ahead and clear that out just like I showed you. Now, this if I go in here to file open, that's going to be a Z project, and that's going to replace everything in my scene with that new project and any any associated tools that it has. If I want to load up a project without blowing this thing away, I can go in here to load tools from project, and then just go to that folder, and I'm going to bring in the ports version. This will be the body. There we go, and we'll say all high. Yeah. Um, so under subtool, there's an all high that'll make everything to the high res version. And this was for a bake file, so you're gonna see that's why his eyes are like half shut and his mouth is open. And let's go back to skin shader here. So here is our little beefier, little more shredded. Um, and you can kinda, I don't know, can we? Do I have the original in here? Let's see, this one. This is our original, and this is our game res. We don't need that. Delete all. Okay, so um, you remember the original one we just showed you uh, where he was. Let's go ahead and turn off his polypaint. This polypaint, by the way, is just from scan data. So if we zoom in here, you got a lot of, a lot of nice little details and little, uh, if we turn off the poly, well, the poly paint's cool, don't get me wrong. It's got kind of a farmer's stand, <laughs> and, uh, you know, little moles and freckles and stuff. Uh, but if we turn the poly paint off and we go over here to the, this is what the green metallic I like to use when I'm sculpting. This is where you'll see a little bit more muscular, a little bit more chiseled. Um, but, you know, it's still, still got all the little skin details in there. So if we go in here, let's turn off RGBs yet on. You know, it's even got um, little swirl patterns on the fingerprints and stuff. So a lot of free detail from um, scan data. Now, you, that doesn't mean you're stuck with that. Like you can see here, I put a scar across his face here. And then when, in the, when I went to texture it, you know, you can pronounce, you make that a little more pronounced and stuff. But, you know, if you want to make a scar, I think an easy way to do that is uh, actually, you know what, maybe a little bit of clay tubes here. And then uh, let's put a scar across his face. We'll kind of go through here and put like 
Here's a here's an old healed scar. So we'll use a little bit of clay tubes, uh, or even just clay brush. If it's a really old scar, just clay brush, and that'll actually you'll notice while I'm doing this, it's destroying my details, which sometimes you don't want. So in that case, standard brush is a better standard brush will pull out the volume without destroying your details, as well as BF Form Soft. I think we'll do the same thing. You can use this to kind of add volume without destroying your details. You can also go down in subdivision levels. So that way there's no details to destroy. So even if I use my clay brush on like subdivision level three, you know, I'm using my clay brush, using my clay brush. And then if I go back up, the detail will still be there because, you know, it didn't exist on that lower subdivision level. Anyway, back to making a scar. Uh, this is where I'll go back into, so that, that honestly is a fine scar. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to get a little bit of that skin pull, that tight skin pull, uh, you can go back and forth with your damn standard O2. And that'll kind of give you, oops, let's, yeah, subdivision level six. And I honestly, I should go to subdivision level seven for the full pour experience. I just didn't feel like it. It wasn't, again, this is just for stupid live stream stuff. So I'm, I'm not fully invested in making it crazy. Um, more about speed and performance, but anyway, you can kind of do that to kind of give yourself a little bit of that kind of pulled skin look. Um, and if you need to fill any of this in, uh, for example, if you have a smooth spot or you, you know, and then it kind of looks out of place, easy way is you can take your standard brush. What are we doing on time? We got 12, 30 minutes. Uh, clone that off. Go in here and say spray, grab alpha, uh, say alpha 23. Drop that Z intensity down. You can go through here with Alt or let go of Alt. That's maybe a little lower. So you can let go of Alt and hold down Alt, and then it'll just kind of give you that noise base back. You can again, tons of skin brushes you can download and use or make your own. Uh, these are just quick and dirty. Um, for putting in these ports, first we got to make the ports, right? Um, these were stolen from resources you have, both of them, all of them. So these we have like big, medium, and small ports. So here's our medium port, here's our large port, and then here's a variation of the large port. You see the large port has a big ring around it, and then the small port, they just kind of fit within each other. So let's go ahead and make those real quick. So go out of edit mode, control in to clear a canvas. Um, steel, comma key, brush, boolean. Uh, no, wait, we just have these, I forgot. Don't even have to go looking for them. Uh, grab a star, drag it on your canvas, go into edit mode. Poly mesh star, uh, hit uh, B I brush insert I M M boolean, and if you just go through here, you can go through and you can select stuff, right? Uh, however, if you hit W on your keyboard, then you can just grab these and you can just take their geometry. Uh, there's also a plugin you can do called I M M extractor. You can download and install this, and then you can just hit this button, and that will. Oops, got to go back to the brush. B um, standard brush, uh, BI brush insert boolean, Z plugin, IMM extractor. That will extract all of the brush meshes into a subtool stack. And then you can go through and you can remake your own IMM brush version of this or delete them or move them around, rename them quickly, I'll modify their geometry, however you want to do that. So another thing for you, looks like delete all. Back to the star, back to W, back to stealing geometry take this one. Uh, I want to make a port out of this. Now it's double sided. I don't need all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the geometry that I do want, say geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Um, and then probably what I did, uh, just to make it a little easier to see, I'm going to go way down here to display properties double. And now I can see the back a little easier. And I can just go into my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, hover over an edge, close convex hole. We'll just cap this off, control shift tap, control W, make that all one poly group. Um, if I want to move this back, Q mesh, polygroup ball, or extrude, polygroup ball, pull that back, give a little bit of thickness, and now I've got uh, a little port. Now, I can do more than that. I can, like, you know, extract this, uh, extrude this out, and then say, like, inset. Uh, we'll do polygroup island legacy. We'll pull this in, and then we'll say maybe Q mesh. Hold down shift to pull along, and then we'll say, you know, crease PG underneath your so, crease menu. And now... Uh, if we hit D for dynamic, we'll have a nice um, port here. And just like we talked about way back, if we go in here and we say crease level of two and then smooth subdiv of three, now we have a nice little fall off um, for our little port 
brush that we want to make. And of course, feel free to modify this however you want. If I go back here, and we'll just go back here before we capped it, basically. There we go. Um, stepping through our undo history. So for example, it's like, you know what? I don't want this green here. We'll say delete hidden. And then again, uh, if, if you just do a close holes, it's going to give you that geometry. Not great. So that's why I tend to go in here and say close convex hole. Um, and then if I want to isolate just this, we just control shift tap, control W. And then again, let's make that more obvious. There we go. And then again, uh, Q mesh can sometimes be a little weird because it wants to stick to other geometry. It's totally cool. It's, I really love using it, but just to play it safe. Usually what I'll do is extrude poly group ball. That won't do any, anything special. So now we've got a tighter circle. So now when I go in here and I put in, you know, my ridge, um, and you can also go through here and do like, you know, bevel, you just put a big fat bevel on here and you can go in here and say like insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, keep poly group. And then you can go in here and you can like pull out a little rounded whatever there. So feel free to go through here and model whatever you want. Um, group by normals, however you'd like, and then crease PG and then hit D for dynamic and give yourself a nice little medallion port. Um, so that's how I made one of them. And then the other one, very similar, star, BI brush insert. I am a model toolkit. Your, yours will look a little different than mine, but basically here it is circular right here. So W, grab it. Um, yeah, pretty sure I started with this thing. And then we'll say, maybe grab this. And maybe I use this whole thing. I'm gonna do a quick uh, group by normals again. Um, this can buy, be a port, and I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down quite a bit, so we'll just scale along that axis. If I want to thicken this out again, I can do extrude polygroup all, and then just hold down shift to kind of pull along those surface normals of that polygroup. Uh, and then again, uh, let's go through here. I'm going to say polygroup poly loop here, and you know what? I don't even need this. We'll say insert single edge loop, hold down alt to get rid of that one. So now, uh, again, polygroup here, boop, oops. Poly group, there we go. And then if I want to pull out a border, again, we'll just do an extrude. And then if I want to inset this, inset here, I always like, instead of just going through here and just saying, you know, Q mesh or extrude and just going straight up, oh, and we're doing, it's doing the front and back poly group. If you want to do just one, just do island. There you go. So we can pull this out and that just comes straight at you. So when you hit D for dynamic, there's just, there's nothing to indicate when you're, especially if you're going to bake this to a normal map, there's just no information there for it to grab onto. It just goes straight back, right? I just, it's not, not a good look. But that's why I tend to go in here and say inset first, just do a little inset and then, um, and then I'll go back to extrude. And then instead of just extruding the straight out, I'll go through here and I'll hold down shift and then I'll pull along that surface normal again. And then when I do a crease PG, hit D for dynamic. Now we've got a nice inset we can really see that bevel right and then same deal here you can say crease level of two smooth set of three which we talked about a while ago and now we have a little port and port variants and stuff like that um now if we did want to do a variant uh we could say okay this, this is good for one port right so i'm going to duplicate this off and let's say on this one here we'll go into solo mode um i wanted to do something like i don't know collapse poly loop we can collapse this down um and then I would probably rebuild this, but let's try this. Let's hit control. Let's go in here to mask circle. I'm just going to mask all of these and then I'm going to hit W. And if I, if I uniformly scale this, yes, it will bring it down, uh, but it's going to bring it closer in all axes. So you'll see it's, it's kind of scaling down and I don't really want that. I want it to only scale in, um, as we're looking at this kind of the X and Y axis and not the Z axis. So how you do that is you hold down alt and then do the Z axis. And that way it maintains the thickness, but just scales in that direction. So instead of uniformly scaling and getting this thinner, just hold down alt and then scale on the Z axis. And now it'll, it'll bring it in, uh, but it won't shrink it. It won't unthicken it. <laughs> so anyway, we can go through here and again, we can just collapse that poly loop. So now these are all tucked in nicely together. Uh, and at any point, you can still go in here and you know hold down shift and make this bigger and round this out if you want to. Again, insert multiple edge loops, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And if you need to reset your creasing, just say uh, uncrease all under your crease menu. I always like to do a quick group by normals with the max angle, set the 45-ish and then crease PG and then D for dynamic. Now, this will kill some of these more subtle 
curvature changes. So that's when I might just go in here and say, you could go into your group by normals and change that max angle down and that'll pick up more of them. But if you need to, you can just go in here and just manually kind of set these poly groups here. There we go. So now crease PG, D for dynamic. And now we've got a second port. So, uh, and in fact, you know what? I don't even like this. So if I want these to be the same poly group, um, we'll do an uncrease all. I can hold down Alt and start painting on this and then tap Shift without letting go. And now I can go through here and just kind of paint with that same poly group. Or I can just hold down Control Shift, tap between them, Control W to make it all one poly group, and I'm good to go. So again, crease PG, crease level two smooth. There we go. Nice. So we got our ports. We got this port, we got this port, and we got this port. Now, uh, let's do this, crease level two, smooth level three. It's when I make the button or when I make the mesh or the IMM thing we're making brush, um, it's not gonna build in the dynamic stuff. That's just something where I'm turning on just as a preview so you can kind of see it. Oops, this isn't the one I want, is it? Um, that's the one I want. This one is garbage, deleted. Okay, so. Let's make our port brush. So looking straight at this object, how I want it to look at me as I'm dragging it. You know another thing we could do? This is a cool port, right? But let's say I want it inverted and so that this little thing goes inside. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this off. And I'm going to shift D. I'm gonna grab all of this geo, I'm gonna do control shift S to shrink this back to just this, we'll say delete hidden. Um, I'm gonna go down here to display properties and I'm gonna leave, so if doubles off, you'll see these are the, the direction of those faces. I'm gonna go in here and hit flip. And now here's kind of a, if I go back to the back side, now this side is inside or the direction they're facing. And now if I look at these, this is an inset version of this object. So now I can go through here again. Um, I'm gonna turn double on temporarily. I'm gonna go ahead and say close convex hole, control shift, control W, go through here and say extrude, hold down shift to kind of pull this back. Um, actually I need an extra edge, don't I? Sorry about that. Before I do that, I'm gonna to go to this edge. We're gonna say extrude edge loop and I'm gonna hold down, tap alt, hold down alt so I can extrude this entire edge out like so. We'll do a, um, that's fine. I was quickly walk you through it. So I just need an extra edge there uh, and then close here. Nope, yes, there we go. Uh, extrude. Extrude, extrude, extrude. There we go, pull this through. There's actually a funner way to do this that I'll show you in just a second. Um, but now we can go through here and extrude this out, extrude this out and scale this back. And now we have an inverted uh, version of this. Now, just so you know, um, let's do this real quick. I'm gonna hit uh, B, I, brush, insert, Boolean, M. Um, hit W, grab this. I'm gonna steal this here, this here, and then we'll say get rid of this, delete hidden. So let's say I have this object here. We're gonna say, oh, let's do a quick save because sometimes this can get crashy. Let's say we wanna do, oh, sorry, I forgot this is a big file. <sighs> okay, so B, create insert mesh new. That's how you create an insert mesh brush. Now I can go through here and I can create an insert version of this with the little the little nubbin outwards. However, I can go in here to a cylinder, say make poly mesh 3D, frame this up, say group by normals. And now I have a poly group on this side and I have a brush with a hole on the back. And when I have that combo, I can drag out a mesh. Let's go out of solo mode. I can drag out a mesh on that poly group. And then when I We'll kind of line that up. When I let go and then control drag, control drag again, it will mesh fusion that. It will go ahead and sew up that geometry. So now this thing is part of this mesh. I'll do control shift S, oops, control shift X to expand. You'll see it's now welded into that cylinder we just made. 
So, and that was with the little nub and out. Now, if I go to this side on this poly group and I hold down Alt and I bring this mesh out and I kind of just plop that right in there and control drag again, this one is inset. It's because I held down Alt. So now we have one that goes out and now I have one that goes in. That's probably how I made it if I had to guess. So that's a cool way to do that, right? Anyway, uh, we have our stuff, delete. We have a bunch of these ports we want to put into a brush, right? So we're going to hit, again, looking right at right at how we want this to drag out to us. B, create insert mesh new. And I want to keep adding to this brush. I'm going to select this one now. We can go into solo mode if you just want to see it. We'll say B, create in. And now, if you want to, name it first. So now when we say B, create insert mesh append, it will append it here. So now we have polymesh 3D, blah, 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 and then whatevs. Um, you can also do that all at once. If you have, for example, this one, we have, if you're going to do this, two things you need to know. If you want to capture a bunch of subtools all at once, you can hit B, create insert multi mesh. But before you do that, make sure that everything is pointing in the right direction because you're going to capture them all at once. So you need to make sure that everything is looking at you the way you want. Let's say crease, uh, increase on crease PG, crease tolerance, yeah, something like that. Nope, let's say nine, close enough. So just make sure everything's pointing at you the way you like. And then when you go in here, you can say B, create insert multi mesh, it'll grab all of those sub tools into one brush. But I'm using the append method. So again, Make sure we have the insert multi mesh that we're working with, with the two that we like. And then with, you know what, on this one, I'm just gonna grab, I just need this one. I'm gonna hit B, create insert mesh append. And now we have a port brush that we can go through here and we can say, insert this one, or then insert this one, and then insert this one. Um, if we wanna make sure, let's go back to our base here. And again, you can see we're kind of getting capped out. Uh, I can go in here and I can say, Z plugin, Z so we could also turn off dynamic um, and then make our brush size whatever we want. We can also go in here to preferences, draw, and we can crank up our max brush size or a dynamic brush scale. That's a multiplier. If I don't want to deal with all that, I can also go in here to Z plugin, scale master, uh, Z brush scale unify. That will make him a little more friendly with Z brush general scale. And that way I can also go in here and use dynamic uh, with him. So now he's scaled down to where he's a little friendlier with ZBrush like we were talking about earlier. And then when I go down here to export, we now have a new export scale value. So uh, I wanna put ports on him, right? So I'm gonna go through here and I'm looking at this number and I'm gonna say, grab my clay brush and just looking, I'm looking for a broad blank area, but we don't wanna put stuff on his butt. Um, or maybe we do, there's not a lot of blank on him. So in his knee here, um, let's say for the medium, I want this to be at 30. So I'm gonna say draw size 30, enter. I'm gonna hold down alt and I can just, um, for what I like to do, I just like to kind of rub the clay brush on there. Um, if you want, you can also go in here and say drag dot alpha 06 maybe, and then crank up the Z intensity and you can go through here. Oops, change that focal shift down to negative 100. And now you can go in here and just kind of stamp. So again, just look at your draw size and say, you know what? For a small, we'll do 35. And then this is our small. And then for medium, we'll do maybe 50. And this is our medium. Just keeping things consistent, right? Um, and then for large, we'll do maybe 75. And I'm, I'm just guessing here. So obviously feel out what makes sense for you. And then you can hold down Alt and then you can kind of punch this in. So we have our small, medium, and large. Now we want to fit our ports to this. Now this has subdivision history. So if I try to draw an IMM on this, so if we go here to our brush, oh, if you want to save this as well, go in here to brush, save as, um, and then probably where I'd put this is, where would I put this? Z brush 2024. So if you throw it in here, C program file ZBrush 2024, Z brushes, you can go in here, you can see I have a bunch of underscore folders 
that these are just what what's in your light box, right? So if you don't use it all the time, you just want access to it quickly, put it in its own custom folder or throw it into a folder that exists and you're good to go. If you want it to show up every time you start up ZBrush, a good place for that is ZBrush's oops, is um, Z startup brush presets. And then just put it in here. And then every time you start up ZBrush, you can assign a hotkey to it because it'll always be in here. Uh, anyway, if you want your light box, hit the comma key, go in here to brush and then go find your folder and then you know, wherever you saved it, it'll be in there. Now we have small, medium and large or whatever. Uh, so in here, let's figure out, oh, again, if we try to use this, it's gonna say, hey, this has subdivision history. You can't put an IMM brush on that because that'll change the vertex order. And we wanna keep our vertex order so we can animate. So what I like to do is go in here and do an insert and just insert a star. Let's go out of solo mode here. And we got a big old star. So I'm gonna take this star and I'm gonna move it inside the body here. Turn on transparency, just a star sitting out inside the body. In fact, you can move this to the top and then if you go to tool save as, that'll inherit the name so it doesn't rename your other subtools. Anyway, we have a star in there, right? Um, and if you are, if this was symmetrical across the X axis, you could turn on X on the star and then when you drag out your IMM, it will be an IMM on the star that doesn't have subdivision history, but it'll draw onto the body. So here we have our IMM. We're gonna go through here and we're just gonna start drawing this out. Now, I wanna make these all the same size, right? So for our small, I wanna hold down control and it'll snap it to your brush size. Uh, we got lucky there, but you may have to go in here and just kinda, you know, I like to tap S on my keyboard. 35 is a little big, so we'll say 34. And then as I'm dragging out the IMM, just hold down control and it'll snap to your brush size. So you know what, maybe 32 is the right size. So we can go here and we can just snap, snap, Snap. Now, if it's not perfect, that's okay. You can just go back in here with your move, your hit W on your gizmo. Um, you can move this stuff around. Another thing you can do quickly, go in here to your move brush. There's also BMT. Yeah, move topological is a brush you can select. You can also just go in here to auto masking. This is why I always have my brush menu open. So auto masking, turn on topological. You can change the range down to whatever you want. But if you make your brush size one, draw size of one, it'll just move around the entire piece of geometry. So you can very quickly go in with your move brush and just move this stuff around uh, very quickly. So there you go. Now, you'll see it's also kind of out a little bit. I'll show you how to fix that. So we'll go back into our brush menu that we're using. We'll grab the medium. And then again, we just got to figure out and write this down. If you're making a bunch of ports on his body, just write down what small, medium, and large is for your clay brush and your IMM brush. So we'll go through here. And in fact, I have that somewhere. I'll show you my mural board. So uh, we have, hold down control, that's a little small, we'll say 40. And now we have our medium uh, here. So 40, 40, 40. And then we'll go finally to our large port here. And we're just gonna guess, yeah, that's not bad. 65, yeah, nailed it. Boop and boop. There we go, control drag. Now if I go into solo mode, you'll see these are still attached to the star. Just grab over all these, say split hidden under your subtool split menu. And now we have our ports. And again, we don't have dynamic turned on, but we can hit D for dynamic. And we can say again, increase level of two, smooth it to the three, give us a little preview. And now we got little embedded ports on his beefy body, beefy boy. Hey, he's got some big arms, long arms. And there you have it, ports. Uh, how are we doing on time? Okay, 15 minutes. Okay, um, oh, I gotta start. A lot of comments come in, sorry if I missed them. Keep shouting them out to me. I'm not skipping them on purpose, I promise. Uh, I'm probably new with fiber. Okay, that's where I started. Uh, export fibers, yes. Uh, export highest details with low poly to Maya. Um, yeah, I'll get more into baking on my channel next, or this Thursday, but all you, re all you really need to do is with everything high, and remember we have our all high, just hit that all high button, go in here and save file, uh, tool export, and then export this as an FBX. So not OBJ, but FBX, and that will export all of your sub tools. And you can even name them base body underscore high. That'll be your high res. And then if you have a low res associated, you can go down here and say all low, and then you can rename an underscore high to underscore low, go in here to export. Again, export this as an FBX and then name your FBX underscore low. And then when you import this into another baking program, it'll bring in all your high res meshes with underscore high, uh, import the other file, all your high or all your low reses with underscore low, and then you just bake high to low. Um, 
that's about it. Pretty simple. Um, depending on how complex your scene files can get, which can be pretty complex. Hmm. <laughs> your cat is a certified ZBrush uh, master. That's awesome. Just by osmosis. Just hanging around the room is enough to do it. I buy that. Um, let's see. Um, Z modeler question, how to make a transition on a three by four plane from three polys on the left side to one poly on the right. Um, sorry for my, oh, no, your English is fine. It was just, um, I, I didn't understand uh, what I was aiming for. So that, that makes a little more sense. So let's say a uh, plane 3D, edit. And I'm gonna say make poly mesh 3D. One easy way I can go through here. I can say, um, boy, I got a lot of stuff open. Close, 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 okay reconstruct boom boom and we wanted three by four so reconstruct one two three four by three okay so here is a let's say delete higher delete hidden so this is a three by four uh plane three polys on the left to one poly on the right oh yeah, 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 okay. Um, so, uh, probably the easiest way to do that. Um, insert single edge slip. I'm gonna get rid of these extreme, wait, three on the right and then one on the left. And that's so why I guess these ones we don't really need. So here is, I mean, if you wanted to keep those, you can, uh, but basically collapse, oops, collapse edge. So I'm gonna collapse this one up and then collapse this one up. And then, um, there you go. So one, two, wait, was it four? One, two, three, four, two, one. Uh, and then this middle one is kind of gross, but um, what I'm thinking is you probably didn't need those. So like insert single edge loop, you don't need these. And it's one, two, three, four to one, then it would just be a collapse. So collapse, collapse. This is gonna be kind of weird. You can pick one side or the other, you know, but now you've got one, two, three, four, two, two, or one. Um, kind of. <laughs> I'm probably I'm probably misunderstanding that too, but basically if I wanted to just have this, for example, and then go through here. Also, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, I know when a lot of people that come to ZBrush, uh, especially from it seems like 3D Studio Max modeling, really on any box modeler when you're box modeling in other programs people love using edge extrude everything they do is edge extrude this edge extrude that edge extrude i hate edge extruding in zbrush it's not bad you can go in here and say you know hover over an edge extrude edge loop and um let's say delete hidden you get that one yeah you can extrude an edge loop tap alt to extrude one tap alt to extrude an entire edge loop and then hold down alt to do an edge ring it's fine there's nothing wrong with it and there's like you can hold down tap space bar to do some cool stuff where it goes parallel and keeps your edges you know it's got a lot of cool stuff built in i'm just not an edge modeler um in zbrush so i like to have thickness to my assets here so i'll just put it even if it's a temporary one instead of extruding edges i like grabbing faces extrude poly group and then i can tap alt making a new poly group right um it's just easier and then you go q mesh it's cool too you can go through here and mark these and then q mesh poly group and pull that through and it'll sew it for you you know, so it's super powerful. Um, but that's, if I'm doing any sort of like edge extrusion, I'll give it thickness and then I'll go through here and I'll extrude the thickness. And then if I just want the top part, I'll just say, you know, group by normals, grab it, delete hidden. And there I go. Now I'm back to whatever. Uh, increase all. But that's probably not what you wanted. But as far as I can tell, like collapsing edges is probably your best bet. Um... Yeah, maybe. Uh, do you polish the armor inside ZBrush? You get it into another software to finalize it. Generally, it's just all in ZBrush. Um, if I'm rebuilding any armor, um, you know, here's here's the vanilla version. Uh, and in fact, the the live streams for this, we'll talk about it. So again, back on my YouTube channel, just type in Warhammer. We talk about how we created this armor. Uh, it's fairly simple, especially if you're doing. I don't really have the clay version you know i can just make one so i've got an arm here right um 
Or you know what? Maybe we don't have an arm. Maybe we just have a tube. So I'm going to duplicate this off. And then I'm going to, you know, instead of duplicate, I'm going to clone it. So we have this here. And it's like, ah, oh, I want to put a shoulder uh, pad on here, but I just got this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, dynamic apply, maybe dynamesh this whole thing. Maybe go in here and say polish by feature. So now I've got a shape. I've got a volume and I want to put a, a shape on top of this. So again, I'm going to tap X to go out of X symmetry. I'm going to grab this, say delete hidden, and I'm just going to cut in. I have the volume I want. I just want a specific shape out of this, right? So maybe I want the shoulder pad to go here and then oops, here and then here. So that's the shoulder pad shape that I want, right? Well, I'm, I'm almost done. Um, all I got to do is say delete hidden, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. Uh, keep groups if you want to, but we don't need it. And just keep hitting half. So now I've basically rebuilt that volume. And then I can go through here and say Q mesh polygroup all. Uh, I'll do a quick group by normals. And if I want to polish or smooth this out a little bit, again, polish by feature, close circle to maintain our volumes. Just tap that a few times. Now I've got a nice smooth piece of geometry. Of course, I can continue rebuilding this. I can keep doing half, keep groups. Um, simplifying this as much as I want. Um, and then it's not doing a great job, is it? Let's see, zero mesh half. We can actually say, we can go through here and fix this if we want. So I can say, hover over an edge. Oh, already has one. Let's say bridge two points, U, U, and then we'll collapse. There we go. Simple, right? That's just a simple piece of geo. Then we'll go through here and we'll extrude this out, and then maybe we'll extrude this out, and then maybe we'll extrude this out. And now we got a little piece of armor. We can go through here and do our creasing and hit D for dynamic, and boom, I got armor. And I didn't have to be like, okay, let me sculpt this and let me, you know, refine it, and then let me take it into Max Miyamoto Blender Cinema 4D, Topo Gun, whatever, use 3D coat, and then rebuild everything and spend like hours to do this. This is like, no, get the volume. Zero measure, maybe a little bit of cleanup, extrude what I need to, and I'm done. Uh, and that's basically how this entire thing was modeled. Now, back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, if I'm doing very, very sketchy, ornate stuff, um, we'll let this load in. That's when maybe I do start with a sphere and then be like, okay, I want it to be kind of an eagle head with some swirly bits. Let's do this. I'm going to say delete this out of here. Delete all here, and then delete this, and then delete this, delete, delete. There we go. So now something like this, if I'm just kind of feeling out uh, a design, you know, and I'm not worried about edge loops or making everything perfect, and like we were talking about earlier, I will go through here and just kind of sketch it. You know, it's not nothing special but it's just kind of going through here and being like, okay, this is kind of what I want. You know, like we're talking about the eagle head, you know, this is kind of an eagle head that I want. And then, then I'll decide, okay, do I go in here? Let's just do use this example. Split, hidden. Um, and then I want to turn on X to go into X symmetry, I think. This is where symmetry does get a little bit weird in ZBrush. Um, if we turn on dynamic symmetry here, ugh, I got to go through here and set all this back up. Honestly, what I'd probably do if I wanted to make this perfectly symmetrical is I would, let's say this is exact placement that I want. Uh, I just want to kind of refine this. You can use dynamic L sim and set your pivot. I, if I'm being honest, what I'm probably going to do is duplicate this. I'm going to shoot this down to the bottom so we can just see this. I'm going to grab just one of these. Switch back here. X symmetry off. Delete hidden, dynamic off. W, um, go to center. I'm going to throw this. Let's turn on our floor here. That's the middle, right? I'm going to put this in the middle temporarily, and I'm going to rotate this here. Ugh. Let it auto save. This is when you can just meditate. And be like, oh, how you doing, Mike? You okay today? Good. Don't get mad. Just just have a little, little quiet moment for yourself. And then you're back in here. So now 
Yeah, let's go ahead and turn over floor. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the x-axis, x symmetry turned on. I'm on my world symmetry, and then I'll go through here and say, you know what? Let's drag from our resolution slider and pick that. Okay, and then we'll crank that up a little bit. We'll say dynamesh at a little higher resolution, and then maybe I'll go through here and start refining this mesh. Um, you know, kind of going through here with a little bit of H polish, a little bit of trim dynamic. And then if I decide, you know what, maybe I do want to go in here and start, you know, say split mass points, move this in and start having little bits and pieces. We'll say, okay, the eyeball is going to be a separate piece of geometry. It makes it a little bit easier to kind of move stuff around and sculpt around it, right? Instead of trying to go in here, even if it is going to be all one mesh eventually or like a, a, a relief sculpture or something, I will still use separate objects for ease of use and then be able to kind of go in and grab what I need. And then here, it's like if I want to, you know, refine just the beak, again, even if it's all going to be one mesh eventually, I'll just go ahead and split this out temporarily. Um, we'll do a quick close holes, mirror and weld, W, control tap this, control drag out a little thickness here. Um, Read Dynamesh, it's already got Dynamesh built in, and then I can go through here and start refining this beak. Big old H polish brush here or clipping. Use your clip brush too if you want to go to the side and say, you know what? Let's go through here and kind of clip this back and then go to the side here. Uh, again, doesn't have to be beautiful just yet. I'm just refining the idea. In fact, you want to see way more on this. Um, our station page. Um, you know what? Presentation is probably the better one. So in here, the GDC Halo 2 Anniversary and the ZBrush Summit. This goes into practical application. You can actually see this too for like the, you know, Go in here and find your volumes and then rebuild it with Z spheres or um, there's actually a ton of ways to do this. But uh, for example, this beak is a good example here. Let's smooth this out. Uh, let's hold down shift. I'm going to turn on Sculptors Pro if I want to eat away some of this nasty geometry. That'll eat the geometry. And then we'll turn that back off. Redynamesh. Um, so for example, we're going to go through here and we're going to say this is going to carve in. Let's do a little bit more resolution here. If you want more resolution, you can turn this to open circle and that'll really crank up your Dynamesh res. Uh, we don't need that much. Let's also go back here to mass pin. Okay, so like we were doing with the cove face, we can go through here. We can start determining where our hard surface edges are going to be. So we're going to say hold down alt. We're going to kind of pull up to an edge here. And if we want to pull to a point, you can go in here to move accu move with accu brush turned on which again is this little button right there uh, in fact if you want to pull out to a corner you can do that so instead of you know going in here and sculpting stuff you can go in here to move accu and you can kind of pull this out to a corner and push this back down so that way it's like hey instead of rounding off we can say that i want this to be a little more straight and then go back in here with your h polish trim dynamic we need to do this brush sorry it seems like i'm doing this like 50 times today i said all brushes there we go. So H polish this, trim dynamic that, Damien standard this, Damien standard that, and just go in here and find what your hard surface geometry kind of needs to look like eventually. And then you can go through and rebuild this. My preferred method is going in here. Again, you can export this and rebuild it however you want. For my money, just as quick and dirty work. Uh, we'll turn on X symmetry, go in here with our Z spheres and a topology Q. Let's do... I won't do this often. Let's do Mac Cap White, a little darker gray. And let's go through here and rebuild um, low res geo. So you can kind of go through here and just kind of go back and forth. Here, 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 here. Let's get rid of that one. There we go. We'll start from the middle out. So now you can just redraw the geometry really quickly. And this is going to give you, again, as detailed as you want. Um, or you can just zero mesh it and sculpt to refine. But if you, again, you want very precise um, placement, you just hit W and then go back to Q here. You can just start building. This seems to be having a hard time getting those middle pieces, I guess, middle out. And then uh, here, this isn't great, but you know what I mean. Go through here and build your geometry and maybe here we'll kind of cut through the middle here and we'll just kind of terminate it. I don't know, something like this. So we're rebuilding Geo. And again, it's not going to allow you to do N-Gon. So any N-Gons you leave, it will resolve those for you or you can just go in here and, you know, do what you need to do. Um, 
Again, this is going to be a nasty piece of geometry, but it's fine. Whatever. You can start here, hit A for adaptive skin. Uh, again, it may by default want to dynamesh that for you. So that's when you need to go in here to adaptive skin, dynamesh down to zero, density down to one. Uh, if we like this, we can say make adaptive skin. We'll just say append that adaptive skin here. And now we've got this. I might do a quick inflate here. We'll say inflate of one just to get our volumes back or 0.5 maybe. That's a little much. There we go. We'll go back to Skin Shader 4 so you can kind of see what we're doing. Uh, and now we have our rebuilt um, geometry that you can then go through here, Q-Mesh, Polygon, Polygon, Q if we Q-Mesh this in, make sure you go down here to Display Properties and turn off Double so you can see, oh, we're inverted. Flip. Um, oh, you know what? Sometimes when you're using Z-Sphere, it does a morph target. Delete that morph target. Um, Oh, we're actually on the um, Z-Sphere still. Delete that Z-Sphere if you don't need it anymore. Um, let's see, this one, this one, there it is. Skin Z-Sphere is the one we want. Oh, it'll get you. Uh, Q-Mesh this in, flip it. Oh, you got the morph targets on there still. So, morph, so turn off double, delete your morph target, ugh, and then flip. So now we're just, this is just box modeling, right? Um, so if you want to go through here and say, you know, collapse these edges. Another thing too, is if you had some real rough geometry and you're like, you know what, zero measure, I did a bad job. Can you save me? Uh, you can have zero measure kind of save you. So we'll go through here. We'll do a little bit of cleanup work. Um, we'll go ahead and say crease PG. You know, we'll do a crease tolerance, turn on dynamic. We'll say dynamic apply. So we've got plenty of geometry and you're like, you know what, zero measure, rebuild me. Um, some geometry based on my polygroups here. First thing, I'm going to turn off X symmetry. We're going to say group by normals with our max angle down quite a bit so we get all of those different sides. And then again, I'm going to say zero mesh, half, depth size down to zero, keep group, smooth groups down to zero, and then zero mesh will go through and rebuild my geometry based on my polygroups. So, and then you could go through here and say, okay, great, crease PG, crease level of one, smooth so div of two or three, two, three. Now we've got a nice clean piece of geometry and then you can go through here and be like, yeah, actually I want this to go from a tight to a loose kind of bevel in here. Oops, dynamic apply, real geometry. So maybe control D one more time. So now we're gonna have this kind of transition from loose to tight. We'll smooth that transition now. We can go in here to our comma key. Whoa, how did this get so big? Damn, I don't remember how to change it. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I, I think you can drag it, but boy, this thing got huge. Um, hard surface kit bash. We have, oh, alphas. So we can go in here to our alphas. Um, these just downloaded off our station, I think. M, grab some of these. So instead of going here and box modeling everything, we can say, turn down Z intensity. X symmetry is still turned on. We can turn on back face masking underneath your auto masking options. Again, turn down that Z intensity and go through here and you can kind of, you know, go through and add your little alpha, alpha modeling. Um, and then you do that for a long time and then you have uh, finished high res. One way to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, running up on time. We're done. Let me answer the last few questions. Um, <laughs> let's turn everything back on so while we're bored uh, listening to me talk we can have something to look at there we go here's our big beefy boy um okay as you said this question i'm gonna are you allowed to use any of the default insert meshes as long as it's modified in a professional professional pipeline or product i want to say in the terms of service any of this basic stuff is kind of like let me see industrial parts at cgcarter.com made them. Uh, I would assume these are safe to use. If you're really worried, then I would say, uh, I would say for ancillary stuff like a Phillips head screw, I don't know that any of them be like, hey, that's my Phillips head screw, unless their Phillips head screw that had a little, uh, had their person, had their face modeled on it or something. I don't know. Um, it should be relatively safe. Granted, you don't want to, if you have to ask 
then I would say just build your own library. Then you know you're good to go. I would say generally speaking, anything you find in the defaults is probably pretty safe. The downside of that is that if everybody has access to these defaults, if it's generic enough, great, just use it. It's just a cylinder with an extrusion, use that. Who's gonna know or who's gonna care? If it's something more specific like this, then yeah, maybe you are allowed to use it. The downside being, well, so can everybody else in the world. So now if everybody else in the world uses this, then it's gonna be like, oh, there's that thing again. You know, so in that case, maybe don't use the defaults just because they're default, you know, they're kind of meh. And if they are defaults and they're generic, use them and nobody's gonna know because they're so generic, you know? So if it's very specific stuff, I don't generally tend to use it. If it's generic, I'll use it just because it's generic and it's just a shape, you know, so. But again, if you have to ask, the safe answer always is don't do it. <laughs> but, you know, generally speaking, it's okay. As long, I mean, for default stuff. Now, if you're going to another place and you're like, okay, let me download this thing from ArtStation and let me use it on this big expensive project for the, the partner, that I wouldn't do. Um, I'd be very careful about just grabbing stuff off the internet to use in your professional projects. That's probably not great. Careful with that. Um, would you rather create armor in ZBrush or Maya? ZBrush, not even... ZBrush and nothing else. I have no interest in <laughs> trying to extrude all those edges for a eagle beak, <laughs> if I can help it. Um, off topic, I have a face pro. Quick save. Earlier it was doing fine, but now it's not saving files. It's showing files saved, but I can't find the file in Lightbox. Okay, well... So here's your quick save in Lightbox. However, if you want to know where that exists on your drive, that is C, users, public, public documents, ZBrush data, 2024, Z, uh, quick save. So here's all your actual quick save files in here. Um, if you're running out of space, and you might very well be, because underneath preferences, quick, I think the quick save limit is like 10,000. It may actually have it up at, or 1,000. Like I drop this down to like 50 because if I'm working on one gig files and I've got a thousand of them, there goes my hard drive, right? Um, so that may be it. Maybe you're out of hard drive space, um, but that's the folder you can go to to get your quick saves. Um, oh, I love you, the Huntle mod. How to make sure the topology aligns properly with the mesh we're inserting onto. Um, that's a little trickier. There are in ZBrush, there are align and distribution options here. But that's something I had to let go of a long time ago when I'm working in ZBrush is the, that's kind of another 3D Studio Max thing where it's like, how do I snap this? How do I move this vert exactly here? How do I go in and type a number to make this vert go exactly this coordinate? It's like, then use, use another program. This is not the program to do that with. Um, you can get infinitesimally small accuracy in ZBrush, but as far as like, snapping accuracy uh like i like i did earlier when we were doing those inset brushes i didn't i eyeballed it i didn't make it perfect um sometimes that can throw your production pipelines into a tailspin depending on what type of modeling you're doing but for this type of stuff eh, eyeball it i know it's not a great answer but that's some of, that's one of the first things i had to let go when i started using zbrush was the need to extrude and snap everything i did it's just like pfft. I'm, I'm done with that. Uh, it's useful in a lot of ways, and you can align things and snap things and Z scale stuff and ZBrush just like you can any other program. But as far as like the minutia of edge flow for every little thing and snapping, ugh. You, you know, honestly, the cost benefit wasn't there. Like, yeah, I would have a slightly less wobbly line at some point in my model, but for stuff like this, nobody cares. I'm certainly not me. <laughs> Somebody might care. Your lead might care. And if your lead cares, sorry, go into plasticity and then um, that's another program I might use, plasticity and then conversion and then bring it in and rebuild it in zero mesh and whatever. But use whatever programs you want. I'm not saying ZBrush is the only program you can use. But as far as having fun and making something like this, I wouldn't do this in Max Maya Moto Blender Cinema 4D plasticity. There's no way. I might do pieces of it in those programs, depending on what their strengths are, but as far as just getting my idea in the round, ZBrush, 100%. Um, if that makes sense. Your mileage may vary. I'm just one person, my opinion. Um, 
How do you fix importing from Maya through FBX with scale and position offset? Um, it just works. Every time I've done it, I just export out of Maya, import in the ZBrush, and there I am. I'm not sure. Um, and I do that quite often. So works on my machine. <laughs> I don't know what, what the fix needs to be. Uh, could you make a tutorial for sculpting character in one piece anime? Uh, oh, that's a... I mean, I have... Uh, I think we have some of that stuff, don't I? Let me see. I got Squid Game. I got Dragon Ball Z. Um, nothing for one piece, though. But eh, I got some anime stuff. And... Avatar, if you can, I don't know if you consider that anime, but yeah, I got some of that stuff too. We made Aang and Ko, so I got, I don't know, I got some stuff. No one piece though. Um, I don't have any experience with e-scripting. Joseph Drust is your person for that. Um, oh, I don't, I can't, I don't know that. <laughs> I know my last name looks like I would speak another language, but uh, just English for me. Sorry about that. Uh, as far as I know, Michael. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, do you have any advice on using a video game map to make a miniature f a video game map to make a miniature figure of it? If you can get the map data as geometry and import it in here, you could, yeah, you could three D print it out and oh, as you as far as talking about like taking a normal map and then applying the normal map to a, you could, yeah, that's a little bit trickier. You'd have to do a normal map to displacement. And then in here you can use displacement to displace your geometry. It's kind of, it's, it's an okay start, but you definitely need to do some cleanup. I think if I'm understanding correctly, uh, why did you skip my question? I did it on purpose. Oh, uh, oh, here it is. Uh, which camera perspective settings do you advise on sculpting human characters for thinking of working on the face and head off? Uh, I know that's probably not the answer you're expecting, but this entire thing, let me see, oh hi, isn't, I, I don't sculpt with perspective on ever. Um, I'll, I'll turn it on if I need to like do a presentation or a render. Uh, the problem with perspective, now caveat, if you're bringing in like ref viewer or going in here where well, you're uh, you know, bringing in reference, you can go in here, turn on perspective. Go in here to draw and you can match the focal length of the camera shooting to your reference to your model and you can match it. As far as just general sculpting, off. Uh, and I don't sculpt anything at ZBrush with perspective turn on. Now you might think, oh, but isn't it throwing you off? And isn't it like, oh, doesn't it look weird? Not really. Um, and the other thing too you need to be careful of is when you have perspective on and you're like this, depending on your focal length, this is actually more distorted than just leaving it off. If you think about it, even if you're sculpting to scale and you're sculpting a scale miniature, are you viewing the miniature from your desk from four feet away or three feet away? Or are you viewing the miniature right next to your eyeball? If you're viewing the miniature next to your eyeball, then yeah, turn perspective on and get right up in it. If you're viewing it like a normal human being, turn perspective off because it, it, this is basically the focal length from this distance is a little is probably more accurate than having perspective turned on trying to sculpt anything. So if you're matching something to a focal length camera, turn perspective on and match it. Uh, if you're just generally sculpting, again, this is just me. I don't have perspective on at all. Um, expert. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so this is one of my friends was having this issue too. Okay, so if for some reason, and I haven't had this issue crop up in a long time, what you can do is just like what they, um, just like uh, Mustafa said, you can go through here and you can say append a cube, uh, not a plane, because you need a bounding, you need bounding box information. So if you append a cube, and that's all I make, make it a polymesh 3D. This cube is perfectly symmetrical, right? And it encompasses your entire mesh. So, you know, you know, mirroring wall across the X, everything is perfectly symmetrical, right? When you export this FBX, it should take, the FBX does this automatically, so you shouldn't have to do this, but if for some reason there's some gremlin causing your midline to be off, you know, if you go down here to geometry position and your X position is off for some reason, 
you can make an, a cube. And in fact, you probably, it's gonna be weird too, the cube top subtool mirrored perfectly encompassing the bounding box of your entire mesh. That should fix any weird issue. But again, FBX should be pretty, it should do that automatically. Um, yeah, I don't use perspective. <laughs> now again, I'm just one dummy on the internet. If, if, if somebody is, has a very compelling reason to have perspective on because they're an amazing artist and that's how they have to do amazing art, then listen to them and use their settings. Um, I only do what I do. If you think my art's amazing, perspective hasn't done anything for me ever. Um, if you think my art is crap and somebody else's art is better and they use perspective, by all means use perspective. Um, curve brush doesn't stick to the objects, the new ZBrush version. Uh, one thing to make very careful, make sure, sure of, as you see, I have a piece of, I have history stored in here. So if I go in here to my, well, there's two things. Curve tube never sticks to anything. Well, it's sticking now, but for some reason, yeah, see how curve tube is like doing this? Two things. Number one, I have history stored. So it's going to stick to whatever your history is. So just make sure control tap, control tap, your latest point in history to get rid of any history. Um, another thing too, some brushes just don't. Like I just made my own custom brush. Um, God, I wish I could fix this. Um, oh, military. Oh my God. <laughs> There we go. So I just made a simple brush myself and this one's much more, um, much better at sticking to a surface than the tube brushes for whatever reason. So I just make my own brush and that one sticks. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention on the, when you were inserting those ports, so if we go back here to our, uh, we killed it. Um, go in here to depth, you can change the depth here. So if you're, if you're inserting ports and you want them more, embed them more, embed them less. That's how you do that. And then when you go through here, it'll embed more or less. Um, not a great answer, but I just make my own curves if it's not sticking with like the tubes because those never have operated good for me. Um, uh, answer is drive me crazy. This is about perspective and ZBrush. I make models for printing. Which perspective settings do you use? Do I need to set the dimensions of the model in advance before starting to sculpt and adjust the perspective? Um, I don't use perspective at all, modeling miniatures or printing or anything. So perspective off, especially if you're doing hard surface modeling, never have perspective on. I mean, turn it on if you need to evaluate it in perspective with something, but generally speaking, perspective off, especially hard surface modeling, setting your gizmo on surfaces, uh, perspective on is gonna throw you off. Um, Sculpting head and separated or with the full body? Uh, full body. Uh, on, this, on the Warhammer guy, anyway. I always get the story rolls when printing that is different from my picture on the ZBrush screen. Um, you can have perspective on and you can go in here to your draw and you could put whatever one is closest to the human eye, the focal length of the human eye, plug that in. Again, though, remember that if you're if you're like if you're sculpting like this, and you're like, "Hey, here's a one six miniature," and I'm looking at it like this, oh, it looks perfect, and then you put it down on the table, and you're like, "Oh, it looks different." Well, that's because you're not holding it next to your eyeball, right next to your cornea, to get this close. So. If you, this is probably accurate if you're holding your miniature next to your eyeball. This may or may not be accurate if your miniature is sitting on a table 10 feet away from you. You know, it's, but another thing too is maybe I'm just not an amazing artist, but like the whole thing of like, oh, I'm sculpting in ZBrush and then I print it out and it's a completely different object. It's like, it, it's the same thing. I've never sculpted something in ZBrush, exported it, printed it out and been like, what, what, where did this come from? It's like, yeah, that looks about what I expected. <laughs> But again, I'm not a super duper, um, what's the word? Like maybe maybe all my 3D prints turned out to be garbage and I just don't have the artistic eye to see the difference, but distortion has never bothered me uh, sculpting this way from this to 3D print. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's just my, my general workflows may or may not be beneficial or even relevant to how you work because everybody's got different workflows and 
um, you know, different expectations for what they're exporting. I just do quick and dirty stuff. So I may be missing some nuances. So take my feedback with a grain of salt. How you go there and you change it though is make sure perspective um, is on. And then also this button on is to the universal perspective that's on. And then change the focal length to whatever makes sense for the human eye or matching reference. This is where you can change that. Um, but beyond that, there's not really much else you can do. It's either perspective or it's not, you know. Um, shirt collars, that is a, usually I'll, I'll sculpt it separate. Um, two reasons. Number one, it's a pain in the butt, like you're saying. Number two, baking. If I have a lapel or a collar where it's all one contiguous mesh and it flips over and then it goes down, number one, it's a pain in the butt to go through and move that stuff together. Number two, if I need to get a clean bake and I've got the lapel sitting on top of it, now I've got to do a bunch of crazy hoops to jump through in order to um, do that appropriately. So, you know what, I, th I'm, I'm, I must have, I was hoping I could have a quick link for you. Um, quick zebra shirt. I mean, I do have a bunch of shirt stuff on here. As far as the collar stuff goes, I mean, hell, I'll just do it real quick. Okay, this will be the last one. Uh, we have a guy here, right? And we're going to duplicate him off. We're going to make him a shirt. So I'm going to go down here. Three, delete higher, delete lower. Solo mode, control, mask, lasso, perspective off. So we want to put a shirt on this guy. Um, X symmetry turn on, like so. Okay, control W, isolate, delete hidden. Polish my feature, open circle, serial mesh, half, depth size down to zero. So we've got a shirt here, and in fact, if we want it to be like a button-up shirt, we can go down the middle here. We can say, let's do this, let's do slice rectangle. Delete hidden, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. And you know what? Polish by feature, we're gonna really polish this out. And we're gonna pull these to corners to keep those nice and cornery. So here's our shirt. And we're gonna say Q mesh, probably gonna fall, hold down shift. There's our shirt, right? And the one that add a collar. Well, you can go through here and you can edge extrude and blah, blah, blah. I would probably, me personally, duplicate this off. I'm gonna say, where does my collar need to be? Something like here. Like this. Delete hidden, Q mesh out. This is basically how I would start my collar. Granted, I would probably do a better job and, you know, Ziri mesh this to get the shape that I wanted. Um, you know, move move the stuff around as needed. And in fact, this this would be a fairly simple one for, you know, I don't even know how colors look, but something like this, right? Uh, we'll isolate this, delete hidden, maybe do a quick polish. Um, keep this corner. Yeah, Ziri mesh, same. There we go. Slightly new geometry. And then go through here, we'll Q-mesh this back and make sure it doubles off and flip. And now I've got a collar that I can bake separately from my shirt, which we'll go ahead and Q-mesh that. And I'll say double flip. Um, now, if I did want to sew these together and be like, you know what, I really need a collar that sticks to this one. Uh, since I use, well, I zero mesh this, but if you use the same geometry, you can bridge between these. You can um, extrude up and then extrude over. Uh, or Q-mesh up and extrude uh, over. Um, you can actually roll this underneath. So this collar here, you can kind of go through here and what would we do, kind of, this is where Q-mesh will get you in trouble, use extrude. Um, just to kind of give you an extra lip, D for dynamic. Yeah. Um, I know, again, quick and dirty, but more effective, more easier when you're baking. Um, or I might just go into Marvelous Designer and then do use their presets to build a uh, colored shirt and then bring that in and then Siri mesh it. But <laughs> um, cool. You uh, saw Roadhouse on Max. Uh, I watched, I did watch the Roadhouse movie. <laughs> it was interesting. Anyway, thanks everybody. I'll let you get back to it. I'm sure you're tired of my, of my voice by now. We went 30 minutes over. That's okay. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Learning how to sculpt these weirdo things that I did. And uh, like I said, Thursday I'll do a live stream on my channel where we'll go over like the Substance Painter stuff for uh, co-baking and animation and stuff like that. Uh, as well as maybe we'll talk a little bit about my, uh, where's my story at? This dude. We'll go through and we'll, oh, we'll talk about some of this stuff character creator stuff and maybe a little mocap well mocap stuff probably not but anyway see y'all thursday thanks everybody have a good rest of your day